AccuStats Video Productions presents from the LA Expo at the Hilton Convention Center in Burbank, California, AccuStats Eight Ball Invitational Championships. Along with my good friend Larry Schwartz from Chicago, Illinois, I'm Bill in Cardona, and together we're going to bring you round two action here in this very, very important invitational tournament. And the two players slated this evening, Larry, are two players that are very capable of defeating anyone in the world. Roger Griffiths, excuse me, Johnny Archer, three-time world nine-ball champion. Johnny Archer on the left. Uh, at, at this point in time in the tournament, he hasn't really fared that well. He's not playing as well as we've expected him to play, but he promised me that be before this match began, he promised me that this match, <laughs> he's going to come alive. His opponent, Roger Griffiths, played a superb match in his, his opening round match, winning eight games to two, I believe it was, against Mika Immonen. Roger is playing very, very well right now, and he's definitely a strong eight-ball player. This match is, in my opinion, a flip of the coin. Without a doubt, Bill. Uh, Johnny, uh, Johnny's first match, it was a kind of a heartbreaker. He lost at 8-7 and uh, had a good chance of winning it and lost in the final game. Uh, aside from that, Roger's been playing excellent. His break has been his break has been super, which has been a key factor in this uh, in this tournament, just because of uh, Bustamante's the, the person that's undefeated, and he has the best break here. Okay, very quickly, I'm going to review the rules. They're going to be lagging for the break. Determine the open break. When you uh, the breaker must break the balls open, and no safe breaks are allowed. Breaking from anywhere behind the head string. Rotate the break. Eight ball on the break, you win. Eight ball on the break, accompanied with a scratch, is loss a game. Scratching on the break is cue ball in hand anywhere on the table. We're playing the three foul rule. Fouls on all balls. No jump cues. No jump shots allowed unless you make them with your regulation cue. Okay? No, no, if, if there are no balls pocketed on the break, the incoming player has choice. If, if there are balls pocketed on the break, the player at the table has choice. All balls on the table are neutral after the break. Even the eight ball, you can hit the eight ball first. Only the shot after the break. Okay, we're ready to get it on now our, to our master of ceremonies on the floor, Scott Smith. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Pat Fleming and AccuStats, we'd like to welcome you to the AccuStats Invitational Eight Ball Championships. And uh, we're going to get underway here in just a couple minutes. I'd like to introduce the principals for this afternoon's match at this time in the booth for AccuStats Video Productions is the voice of AccuStats, Mr. Bill N. Cardona, with his special guest, Lucky Larry. Lucky Larry Schwartz from Chicago, Illinois. Uh, some of the young sun heroes uh, for AccuStats. On the wing is Sean Robinson. On this wing is Dino Gupton. On the bowling cam is Julian Robinson. Back in the back mixing is uh, Merlin the Magician and Pat Fleming. Can we have a hand, please, for AccuStats Video Productions? Thank you very much. And uh, in the pit, officiating is yours truly, Scott Smith. Assisting me with the racking duties is Lou Sardo with the Sardo tight rack. At this time, we'd like to introduce the principles of our matchup for day number two. Our first gentleman is sponsored by Phoenix Custom Cues. He is the manager of CJ's Billiard Palace in Dallas, Texas, former winner of the Pro Tour Championships and the Hollywood Open. And, ladies and gentlemen, a former winner of the ESPN Ultimate Nine Ball Challenge, one of the top players and most colorful guys in the game today. Please welcome from Dallas, Texas, the Rocket, Mr. Roger Griffiths. Thank you. And his opponent is sponsored on tour by Q-Sticks International. They are the distributors of fine cues based in Boulder, Colorado. They introduced a new line at this year's trade show in the summertime. It is a uh, line that is specially built for him. It's called the Scorpion Cues. He is player representative for the Sardo Tight Rack, former winner of the Bicycle Club Invitational here in Los Angeles, former winner of the U.S. Open Nine Ball Championships. Most recently in Virginia, he ran 10 racks in the finals of a tournament there. Four times he has been voted player of the year, four-time world nine ball champion. Please welcome from Atlanta, Georgia, the Scorpion, Mr. Johnny Archer. Thank you. And gentlemen, you may like for the first break. Good luck. Race to eight. Well, Larry, this is, uh, in my opinion, going to be a very sharply contested match. I think both players have come today to play. Roger, obviously, if you watched his match yesterday, he was prepared to play yesterday. If he, if he plays the same caliber of, of, of eight ball today, Archer's going to really have his hands full. He's going to have to be on, his, on top of his game to defeat Griffiths. Without a doubt, Bill, Roger showed yesterday that he does know how to play eight ball, which I've already seen. I saw that at the World Eight Ball Championship, which... Mr. Archer wins the leg. He, 
he did. That's how he qualified to come here. And I watched that tournament, and he was uh, he showed uh, that he does know how to play eight ball. So uh, Archer again does too. You know, uh, I give I give a small edge bill to uh, to Archer in this uh, match. Just uh, on his uh, you know on his ability to pocket. I think he pockets better, and uh, I think it's going to be a great match. I like to make uh, mention to the fact that uh, Larry is a is he's the author of one of the uh, 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 his actually has an article in Billiards Digest called the Eight Ball. Eight Ball. It's an eight. It's an eight, it's ball, a, column. It's an eight ball column, right? Stripes and Solids. Yeah. Stripes and Solids, an eight ball column. It's a very, very well versed uh, article. Uh, every every month, I think they come out with it. Every month they come. That's correct. Bill. Okay. And he also has a book on eight ball, which really is, it's a must read. It's called Eight Ball Handbook for Winners. You really must read that book. You'll pick up a lot of pointers in that book, as thousands and thousands of other players have. In the meantime, Archer breaking the balls in game number one, pocketing a ball on the break, which gives him option now. The table is open. He can choose either the low or the high balls, which is really a, a big advantage for the, for the breaker or the incoming player after the balls are broken. Yeah, Bill. He also almost made the eight on the break. I, well, I believe the two balls were blocking the side, but he got a lot of action on that break. He controlled the cue ball, which he's been having just a little bit of trouble doing in earlier matches, losing it off the table or scratching in the side. Here he controlled the cue ball. Uh, it looks like he's going to elect stripes here. And they look wide open. I can't see him having any problem. I'm sure that uh, he'll have no problem running out here. The uh, 12 ball, the 12 ball looks like uh, that will be the main ball here. Yeah, well, this too. is a do-or-die situation for Archer. The balls are spread nicely over the table, both the solids and the stripes. So therefore, if he doesn't make good with this opportunity, his opponent, Roger Rivers, certainly will. Uh, Archer's well aware of that, so he's, he's, to really, he's being very deliberate now and uh, taking his time to decide which balls he prefers and which ones, which, which actually color he prefers to shoot. I, yeah, think, he, they're, I think they're both equally difficult. Uh, well, I don't think either color has, a, has an advantage over the other. Well, he's elected stripes, and uh, the, key, the key to this rack, Bill, is going to be getting the 12 ball. The 12 ball right here, this ball. This, uh, that's going to be the key ball in this rack. Well, he has to find a pocket for that ball. He's come up to the center of the table. Uh, looks like he's going to shoot the 14. 14, you can see he's looking at that 12 ball, which uh, he should have looked at, I believe, before he shot his first shot. It's good to try to play out the whole rack before you even attempt to shoot your first shot. Now, from the position that he's left himself with on the table, looks like he may even bump the 12 ball. If he doesn't do that, then he'll slide over the top of the 12, reposition the cue ball for a nice shot on the 12, the lower right-hand corner. Yes. Now, I kind of like shooting the 12, 10, 13. Uh, the 13 is a much better lead ball to the 8 than the 10. But uh, whichever way he opts to go, I don't think he'll have much of a problem. But I prefer u u using the 13 as my lead ball to the 8. I agree with you, Bill. If he could see the 10 here, I'm sure he'll do that. Uh, it looks like he, hi he hit himself behind the eight ball. I think he was trying to go exactly how you said, so he's going to have to uh, go from the 10 to the eight. Down to the bottom cushion will probably be his best position on the table to play position for the eight. Now, he wants to do as little cue ball traveling as possible, and what, he's landed in a position. All he needs to do is drag the cue ball to the right side of the table, playing position for the eight in the upper left-hand corner pocket. Nicely executed shot. This is game number one. It looks like it's going to go Archer's way. And uh, it does. Very nice, very nice. He played that rack beautifully. It's, Russia wins game number one. He leads the match one to zero. It's a really satisfying, especially for Archer. Breaks in game number two. Especially for Archer right now, after you know losing his first two matches, it's very satisfying for him to have come into this third match, winning the game, winning the first game, game number one. It's a confidence builder, and maybe just today, maybe he'll break out of it today. And he, he feels that, he, that he's going to break out of it today. He's been really in an offensive slump. Today, he feels like he's going to break out of it. He showed, uh, you know, showed a lot of confidence in, uh, 
in yeah, game he, number one. Yeah, he definitely, uh, watching him play in the earlier matches, just the, I believe the break gave him the most problem. So it'll be interesting. And plus, Roger, his break has been very powerful. And you really, you really must have uh, a good break to compete with the uh, with the level of eight ball players that are, that are in this tournament. Without and a you're doubt, right, Bill, you're right. Uh, he really broke the balls well. Looks like he's going to pocket the ten on the break. Controlled the cue ball perfectly. Yes, he did. And the reason he pocketed the ten ball on the break is because he did hit him with a lot of velocity. If you notice, the ten ball was the last ball that was rolling, and it needed the the uh, the power that Roger put into the break for the 10 to go into the pocket. So therefore he got rewarded because of his ability to break the balls with the power and also control the cue ball as we saw. That's right, Bill. He has the cue ball center of the table. Can't have the cue ball in a better spot than that. It gives you the uh, highest percentages of having many shots, which he does. He's just deciding if he's gonna take the stripes or solids. I think the solids is a better choice at this time because the solids are all on one side of the table, and the key ball would then be the five ball. He he has to eliminate the five ball from the layout. Also, the two ball. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him shoot the two ball his first shot. You know, that would be one of my... I, I, he's looking to play a three ball combination, which I would definitely I, not do. I wouldn't either, Bill. I think he's a, you know, he has a great opportunity here to just play the balls, which he's been doing throughout this uh, tournament, to playing the balls beautifully, picking out the correct uh, patterns. And uh, in this particular layout, uh, Larry, uh, the first shot is very important. If he's able to pocket the two and come up with a shot on the five or even the seven, I think that's what he should do. He's afraid to shoot the three because he may have to cut it too thinly, sending the cue ball in the direction of the six. Right. He's going for the shot that you uh, said, the two ball, and bringing the cue ball up. He's going to have to shoot the seven right now. I believe that's his only shot. He may have the six, but uh, he should. If he has the six, then he should play position for the five in the lower right-hand corner, just to eliminate that ball. That's the the problem ball. He should shoot the five now if he has a shot on it. Without a doubt, Bill. Once he gets the five out, and he's between the seven and the four, he'll be able to shoot each of those in the side, or the seven, the four, using this, you, I mean the uh, five, the four, and then he can use the seven to come on down for the eight ball. He had the five past the four in the right-hand side pocket, he would shoot seven, five, four, one, three, eight. But that's not a, that situation he's confronted with because the five does not pass the four. He doesn't really want to shoot the five because it's a little bit too much of a difficult shot for him to shoot at this time. He feels that he has more simple shots available, but I don't think he has a better shot available than the five. I think well, the five simplifies the rack if he's able to put it, put it down. Bill, he can also shoot the seven now in this, down into the corner, draw it back to try to get a straighter on the five, but that, he should have done that right there, but he'll get another chance at that, but he's going to have to do something with it. I like uh, shooting rail first on the three. I think it'll send them naturally toward the four, five, and seven, and he may even end up with a real good shot on the five. If he does that, if he ends up with a good shot on the five, the remainder of the rack will be just routine. Right, very simple. He'll shoot the five, the four, and the seven. He's trying. See, he used, uh, he used ball first, and he hit it with some velocity. It was much more difficult to control the cue ball hitting it with that, uh, with that type of a stroke. Had he shot it rail first and just played, just played the the, the, the speed on the shot, and that's all he had to be concerned with was the speed. I think he would have fared a little bit better. He, he's going to shoot the five, seven, the, and then maybe... The four and then the five, the seven. Four, the four, the four, maybe... And I then the five, kind of seven combination, which looks pretty simple. The whole thing is when he shoots the... I'd stay away from any combinations here. Seven, he five, did, eight. He did a good job of that. Yeah, you want to make sure that you have control of the table. And in shooting a combination, he may have lost control of the lead ball. And it's very, very hard sometimes to control the lead ball in the combination. Just wants to touch this. That's just about perfect. Now all, all you need to do is pocket the five. It carries a natural slight angle to favor the eight ball in the lower right hand corner. So, you know, he did a fine job in rack number two. Looks like he's going to tie up the match, Larry, at one game apiece here. Yeah, Roger, this match uh, looks like it's going to be a Great match, phenomenal match. Uh, both players are 
got their job done. They broke and they ran out. It can't get any better Memphis than that. Wins game number two after two games. The score is one game apiece. Lou Sardo at the table and racking the balls. Archer breaks in game three. He's going to be pushing up the Sardo tight rack. It's really a, a tremendous, tremendous tool to have in, in a billiard room or for that matter in any room where there's a pool table. It is. That is something else. I just can't, uh, you know, I've watched people try to rack balls for two and three minutes. Watch how fast he racks these. I've watched trying to get the balls tight. Uh, he'll have their rack off in about two seconds. It's a very simple technique. Pushes, pushes him down, releases, pushes up on the rack, lifts up on the rack, and there you are, a perfectly racked triangle. In the meantime, it looks like it's a heavy rack. It's very, very light. It's feather light. It's easy to control. And uh, right now, there's a pretty good bargain on the Cosmo yeah, rack. It's very hard, reasonable. Hard to, very reasonable. Yeah. Now, let's see if Archer can uh, control, keep controlling his break. I believe that it's going to be the whole key to his success in this match. Well, I think that uh, in all the matches played here on this dime, beautiful diamond table, the break is the most well, great break. I don't know if he's going to pocket a ball. Here comes the six ball. He's pocketed the six, which gives him now options. He can choose either solids or stripes. Player at the table after the balls are breaking always has the choice of color. Now the stripes look like uh, the stripes look like they should be the choice simply for the reason the eight ball is surrounded by the stripes and also looking at the table He would have the ten in the side. Well, I, I think no. The only, I think he's. I think he's snuckered on that. Yeah, the only shot he has with the stripes is the eleven. Then I think he's going to have to. If he, if that's the only shot he has with the stripes, which looks like it could be uh, a little more difficult than he wants for a first shot, then he probably will elect solids. No, he's going to go for the eleven. The uh, the pattern is much more clear. Uh oh, he doesn't want to bump the four in front of the pocket. That was a big mistake, Bill. That was. Uh... Now, if he has, if he's straight in on the ten, he should draw back right now. Straight in on the well, well, ten in the side, draw back right now for the fourteen in the far corner down here. Well, I don't know if he can do that. Maybe he can. If he can, then uh, Larry, you hit the nail on the head. That's exactly he what he should, should do. He should draw right back over in this area. He may, uh, he may create an angle by playing the ten. Off for the seven, hitting it more to the left, enabling him to draw back in this area here. Very important to get the 10 out after this shot, uh, the shot, the 14 out. Oh. Now he blocked the pocket for the 13. If it's not one thing, it's another. That's what's probably, Archer's well, probably saying that to himself. Well, the 13 does have the other corner, so that isn't as crucial as getting this uh, 14 out right now. I think if he pockets this ball, I kind of like playing this pattern here. I kind of like playing 14, sending the cue ball over here for the 12. Get that ball out of there, okay? Sending the cue ball over here for the 13. Get that ball out of there. Goes two cushions or whatever up here for the 15. Stopping for the 9, then playing the 8. You know, if you can unscrabble all those lines, then you're a magician. Stopping for the 9 where? Where the 15 is. Oh, you can't do that because the seven's <laughs> out of the pocket. Well, then I lose again. <laughs> he hit it beautifully, and he came over. I think he didn't get the angle. He got a little more straight than he wanted to on the uh, on the uh, 12 ball. So he did want to go exactly how you said there. He wanted to get it a little angle and come over for the 13. That's how important it is to execute an eight ball. I mean, uh, it's a, an, an inch can make a whole difference at winning or losing a game. So now playing this, position. This is a very interesting uh, position he's confronted with here. You know, if he opts to shoot the, uh, the I believe that's the 10 or the 12, the 12, uh, and knock the eight there near the bottom cushion, he'll leave himself with a shot on the nine. But don't forget the 13 is in an awkward position on the table. The seven blocks the lower right-hand corner. And the eight ball, after he's done shooting, may in fact block the lower left-hand corner. So he has to be very careful here. He is going to try to pop right into the eight there. He did that real nice if he comes over a little further. 
He would have loved to attain the shot on the 13. Well, he's got a little bit. He has a shot. He's just going to have to control the uh, cue ball. I don't. I, I mean, I believe he's not going to have any trouble making it. At he just wants to make sure he stays. You know, from the angle that he's left himself with on the 13, he's lying very thin on the 13, which makes me believe that there's a possibility that he could apply not left-hand English, but right-hand English. That's the English to use. That'll put him in good line for either the 9 or the 15. And I think that the shot really doesn't play that more that much more difficult using the inside English because you're cueing the right side of the ball, and that's the side of the ball that you're aiming with to contact the 13. So therefore, that shot shot with inside right hand English I think kind of kind of like simplifies if you will this particular shot I agree with you 100 percent Bill it's uh... he's afraid to pull the trigger on this shot and it looks like that he's laying on the angle that he has to hit it with the speed to go up table and then back down table even if that's if that's the case I think that he's just the outside English I don't like at all he, he can't he can't avoid contacting the seven with the outside English if he's going to shoot this shot, he has to shoot it with the inside ball. Well, I believe he can kill it a lot more than uh, than he's realizing right now because if he can just take a uh, small angle on the eight, even if he gets up in this, if he can get up in this area right right over in here, it's still okay. I don't think he, he can, can draw to the rail. I don't think he can kill it. It's very, he's very thin. If you look on the monitor, he's lying very thinly. Well. He's going to try it. It looks like he's going to go up table and come back down for position on the 12. That's what he's yeah, doing. Yeah, that's what he has to do. Yeah, and he, he overcut, overcut it. it. And he put too much He didn't in. allow for the deflection, Bill, and he, uh, and he overcut the shot. Had he pocketed the, uh, the 13 ball, I believe he would have been a favorite then to run, run out. But the overcut the 13 ball, as we saw, enabling Griffiths an opportunity at the a table. A good opportunity, too. These balls are uh, laying very well. I don't see any problems uh, for Roger. Key is, is that he plans it out and plans his pattern out, not right now. Yeah, I kind of le like leaving the 5-1 as a key ball for the 8. I like shooting the 7 very quickly. I, I like shooting the... Uh, He has to be very careful that he doesn't disturb any other balls. That would be a foul, and that would give Archer cue ball in hand. So he has to be very careful here that his shirt or nothing touches another object ball, all fouls. A seven really wouldn't be a bad key ball either because it's uh, of, of the uh, position that it's in. It's the right of the corner pocket, which makes it easier for him to control the cue ball. And plus he can work his way, work his way down. Right now he can... Uh, he can shoot the four ball, come back for the five or the one. So he's playing position on two balls here. And got perfect on the five at yeah, the side. This is definitely five, one, three. This is five, one, three, seven. Without a doubt. I'm sure that's what he'll do and have no problem getting out here. Because the three is really in line with the seven. It's just like a stop-stop proposition. You know, he'll probably go to the side rail, force it out playing position for the three, obviously in the lower left-hand corner. And now all he need to do is make sure that he stays on top of the nine. You know, he has to stay on the high side of the nine, which there should be no problem in doing that, considering the position he's left himself in. And then a slight cut to the left with the seven will this not naturally send the cue ball off the bottom cushion in perfect line for the eight. And he got a the seven game. was a really good key ball to use. This is game number four with the pocketing of the eight Rick Griffiths will then extend his lead in the match by two games three games to one yeah well it looks like he's if Griffiths wins game number three he leads the match two games to one he'll be breaking in two. game four Oh, excuse me, that was game number three. I'm sorry. That was Griffiths two, Archer one. It looks like Griffiths has uh, brought the same demeanor to the table that he left with yesterday. He seems very comfortable at the table. His execution, you know, is just about as, as good as you can expect. He's uh, very confident right now. You know, he's going to be very difficult to beat in this tournament, cons especially considering how well he's breaking the balls. As we witnessed, you know, in, uh, in game number two, 
Bill, I was talking with Roger yesterday, and I asked him how he plays, you know, why a lot of players uh, that play nine ball don't play eight ball too well because it's a game you have to think out the rack and you don't really have go by the numbers, play pool by the numbers. But Roger said he played a lot of, look at this break, a six ball. But uh, he said he's played a lot of eight ball in the bars when he was growing up, and that is, uh, you know, and that's why he plays so good. And he also oh. plays a good game of straight pool, which also helps. A well, I watched him play in, in yesterday's match. I really didn't watch him play much eight ball in the World Tournament at the Riviera because I really didn't go down there that often. I think I went through once or maybe twice, to the best of my recollection. But uh, anyways, I watched him play yesterday. And when I watched him play, I realized that he had some experience playing eight ball. Matter of fact, quite a bit of experience playing eight ball because he saw the patterns really well. And he ran the balls extremely well. Strong indication that, you know, he's a, he's a veteran eight ball player. And I, and I do believe he's going to be very difficult to beat because of that very reason and coupled with the fact that he's breaking the ball so well as we saw twice now in this match. Very nice. And when he's confident, you know, when he's confident, he's very difficult to beat because he does have tremendous control of the cue ball, and then his shot-making skills, you know, escalate somewhat. So, therefore, he really doesn't have any weaknesses. So, therefore, he's one of the favorites in this tournament. There's obviously Efren Reyes, Mika Eminen, who does have a loss, and Roger Griffiths. Yeah. Those three players. And I can't, I can't is discount Bustamante because he has a really a the, super break, and he's going to yeah. be awful difficult, difficult to beat. So, therefore, it looks like this tournament is going to be a very, very interesting tournament from that standpoint. Without a doubt. Look at the 11 ball here, uh, Bill. I think he's going to. Uh, is he playing the combination? Yes. No? He's going to have to do something with this 11. The 11 balls. Now, in the event anything happens, in the event that anything happens to any of these players in the tournament, Mauro Paez, one of the best eight ball, technically one of the best eight ball players, in my opinion, in the world today, is an alternate for this event. So, therefore, they have a, they have made a, a Pat Fleming once again made a great choice in picking his alternate in Mauro Paez. Yes, I've played Morrow quite a few times, Bill. He knows eight ball well. He knows, he plays all games well. He's a, he's a, he's a great eight ball player. Okay, now the position of the eight in the center of the table. The 11 ball is a problem ball. There's no question, that obviously, he's going to shoot the 11, possibly because it's there for the taking, and he needs to uh, to shoot that ball. Yeah, he's just uh, trying to decide where he's going to go next after the 11. It's uh, Well, if, if he can pocket the 14, he, uh, that's, the, that's the ball he should go, to go to next. He got perfect there. I like that. He doesn't move the cue ball around too much, and... Uh, he knows eight ball. He plays eight ball very well. If he could have pocketed the 14, then I, 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 I would have pocketed the 14. Maybe he only has a half a pocket there, so maybe that's why he didn't like it. Well, he's going to have to use the, he's going to have to come from the 15. He's going to pocket the. And uh, coming, coming from the 15 may be a problem. Maybe he can draw straight back. And if he has a slight angle. Yeah, it looks like he does a little bit of an angle. And then he's going to have to uh, get an angle on the 14 to come back up for the eight ball, too. The eight ball looks like it has uh, two corner, both corner pockets up table. Well, he wanted to do get a little closer to it than this. He sure didn't want this shot to. No, he's certainly not happy with the results test. here. Well, here's the situation he's confronted with here. Not only is he a distance away from the 14 and a much further distance from the 14 that he wanted to end up in, he has the cushion to deal with, too. The cue ball's positioned closer to that side cushion, and to complicate matters even worse, the four ball does block a portion of the pocket, and then he has to elevate a lot of obstacles on this shot. It is cleanly, as cleanly as you could have expected him to hit it, you know, or anyone for that matter. Great shot. Made that a, was a made great a, shot. Absolutely. Made a fantastic, really world-class shot in executing that particular shot. That's game number four. Griffiths is really coming to the table. Yes, he play. is. He's playing with a lot of confidence. And uh, wins game number four. After four games, the score is Mr. Griffiths three, Mr. Archer one.
Mr. Archer will be breaking in game number five. And if you look at Griffiths in the chair, if we can get a shot of Griffiths in the chair, maybe Dean can give us a shot of Griffiths in the chair. Uh, there's a lot of confidence in that man's face right now. I can just see it, you know. A lot of he's determination. He's concentrating. He knows he's really, really prepared to play, and he knows how well he's playing. And that's so self-assuring when you go to the table knowing that you're going to get the job done. There's not a better feeling on this planet. Than that. Without a doubt, Bill. I'm sure you've had that feeling uh, quite a few times yeah, yourself. But, but it's been such a long time since <laughs> I had that feeling. It's um, sometimes difficult for me to relate to that, but it's such a great feeling and when you have when you have it it's it's you know it, it's easy to remember because that's how good it feels well Johnny's broken well uh, Johnny's behind three to one but I don't count him out of this match at all uh, you know especially with the the format of uh, rotating breaks that's See, what, a, when you made Archer a slight favorite, you know, I, I, I didn't like that a little uh, too much because I knew between b the, both of these players that Griffiths was the more confident player. <laughs> and frankly speaking, <laughs> confidence is usually the deciding factor in who wins and who loses in most matches. So if you can distinguish or you can figure out which player is the more confident, you know, in most cases, you'll pick the winner. Well, you know, must case, have I, gotten some inside results, Bill. I went by the uh, past. Uh, all I can go by is past performances, Archer. Well, Archer. Sometimes you got to throw history out the window, you know, <laughs> and uh, and take a and put more emphasis on what's happening now. You know, well, believe history. it or not, Griffiths. Uh, Griffiths. Uh, we had dinner with Griffiths the other night. He was telling us uh, he hasn't been playing too much lately. But I believe that his his skill, his skill at playing eight ball, his knowledge of eight ball is so great that it's, you know, eight ball is not a game like nine ball where you have to always come with a, you know, sometimes a difficult shot. Uh, if you play the game correctly, you, you know, you'll get in stroke. Well, he's coming back here for the uh, three ball, and I believe he's going to get perfect. But the problem he has, Larry, is the position of the eight ball, which is right here. You know, now that ball is surrounded by his his opponent's balls. Right. That that, that which actually <laughs> means that the high balls were a better ball to choose, providing he had a good choice, and uh, a good choice that is. You know, he's running out of balls to uh, to do something with, uh, to be creative with, so therefore he's running out of time to move the eight ball from the position that it's in. And I don't really know what he has in mind, but of course he's at the table and he seems to be playing with a rather uh, a quick pace, which is an indication that he does have something in mind. So therefore there's no indecision out there, which is an indication that when there's a lot of indecision when you're at the table, is a strong indication that you really don't know what the right thing to do is or you're trying to find out what the right, right thing to do is. But when you're playing at the pace that he's been playing, that's an indication that he knows what he wants to do. He may not be able to do it, but he does know right. what he wants but to do. But his pace just came to a halt, Bill, because I don't think he's too happy with this uh, the spot that he put himself in. He, he did have a plan, but uh, it's that... Uh, well, sometimes you, when you have a plan of mind, you have to revise it. Well, he's and doing that. I think that's what he's confronted with from here, trying to revise his plan and, and attack the situation in a different fashion. But uh, still, I did, really don't know what his plan was. I don't know what pockets available for the eight. And uh, the four is lying very low on the table to to move the eight or the fourteen out of the way. That's that why he hit it very nicely. And he well, he should be in in about as good a line as he can be in, regardless of his plan. You really couldn't have positioned the cue ball in a better position than he's ended up in. And uh, if he has a plan, then I like to see what it is because I'm kind of curious to see what he has in mind. Well, Bill, if he <laughs> The plan he has better get him to win this game and run out because when you leave your opponents all his all of their balls and run off your balls and fail fail to pocket the eight, you're such a you know you're become a very big underdog. So he's going to have to get an angle on the four to be able to bump the eight, which he's trying to do. 
Well, if he has the angle to draw right back and nip the 14 or the 8, I mean, he can create something. But he's looking to pocket the 8 in the side. He's in the optimum position with the cue ball in, in relation to the 4 to stop the ball in that particular area to do what he feels he may be able to do. But can he do it? That remains to be seen. This is interesting. I, from, from our viewpoint, Bill, it th does it look like the 8 goes in the sag? That's what I said. He's in the optimum position to do what he thinks he, he needs to do, but can he do it? That remains to be seen. That's a beautiful shot that we have here on exactly the angle that he does have. It looks like he does have the angle in room to do it. And I tell you what, that was some really some world class pool right there. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. That was some beautiful play in there. And I'm certainly sure that was a confidence builder. And I'm certainly sure once again that he's glad that's over. Big confidence builder for Archer. You know. Really, he's sending a message to Griffiths and saying to him, listen, you know, I'm still here. Don't get too confident <laughs> because right. if you do, I'm going to beat you. No question about yeah. that. <laughs> well, let's see if Roger continues to break uh, as well as he's been, as well as he's been, been breaking. It's well, been... Well, I think it's going to take a little more than that to disturb the imperturbable Griffiths considering how well he's been playing, not only in this match, but the match that preceded this one when he played yesterday. Yeah. But once Look again, two balls he's pocketed, play. and uh, the balls, the 14 ball, the 414, they're, you know, he has the combination with these rules. That's not a problem. You hit he, the nail on the head, Larry. If he's... If he shoots anything, I believe it should be the combination 4-14 because the high balls aren't really a good selection unless you shoot the 4-14 now. The low balls aren't a bad selection, but I think the high balls, lie, are, they're laying better on the table. So I think that he has to put a lot of energy into his thinking process here and decide which color is the best, the low or the high, well, the solids or the stripes. The three balls are problem ball for the low balls p positioned on this end of the table. The high balls are the 14 balls are problem for the high balls. But that problem can be eliminated right now, which he's going to do. He's going to shoot the uh, combination. And then the next, then he's going to have to see right now. He should know how he's going to play these balls, which I believe he does. He does play well enough to think out the rack. Okay, most importantly, if he opts to shoot the combination, he must control the four ball, the lead ball to the combination. He cannot afford for the four ball to end up behind the 12. Right, that's a, let's see. Notice that the four ball was going somewhere in that direction, but didn't end up blocking the 12. He does have a shot on the 12. And that is his only shot, which I, he sure didn't play for that. He was playing to come around and get on the 11 or the 13 and come back up for the 12, which he's not able to do. Roger never hides his uh, emotions either. You could, he'll let you know he's unhappy with something. But it's, it's, what he's doing right now is really not advisable, you know. He ended up in a position on the table where he doesn't have a shot on any other ball but the 12. He has to take what the table's giving him. You know, and he can't stand there and dwell over the fact that the table should have given me more from the effort that I put forth. That's not that's not true. That's right. Because that's not true. You cannot do anything to break the concentration that you desperately need at this time. And that's the pocket this difficult shot. Great shot. Great shot. OK, now this time the balls did him a little bit of a favor. He could have ended up on back of the eight, but that's not what happened. He ended up with a reasonably good shot on the 15-13 combination or possibly the 15 straight in. From my vantage point, I don't know what the table's offering him, but regardless of what it is, I think he has something that's very, very workable. I believe he's shooting the combination on the 13, or does the 15 go by? I don't, from my vantage point, I can't it tell. It did go in, so that... Now, shooting the 11 ball would be the right ball to shoot at this time. Well, he's playing great. He's pocketing great. Oh, I said notice, he's pocketing great. <laughs> notice what he did with the cue ball. It landed on the 50-yard line. He was caught in between thoughts. He was caught in between playing position on the 10 and pocketing the, 
pocketing the 11. And he got caught in between thoughts. And this is what, what Archer needed. And if Archer feeds off of this, he's going to be a real, real tough guy to beat in this match. Because that's the first mistake Griffiths has made in some quite some time. And he cannot, Griffiths that is, cannot allow that to bother him. If he dwells on that and Archer feeds off of that miss. Well, I don't it, understand it, why it, Archer. It could spell curtains uh, for Griffiths. Well, Archer's going to shoot the one here, the one in the side. I'd come back down for the seven if I shoot the one on the side. Coming back down table for the seven. Which he did, and he got perfect on that, so. Okay, now it's clear. He can shoot the seven, five, four, two, eight. Oh, yeah, that's probably the best way to go because the, there's the two it lends, lends the best angles toward the eight. There's a key ball. He'll come off the bottom cushion and then come off that long cushion on the side of the table. So you shoot the five, four, playing position for a cut on the two, sending it naturally up table right. he's on gonna this shoot side. The four no, now. he's saving the wrong key ball. This is a mistake. The five ball position in the center of the table sometimes Sometimes when you land on a ball position in the center of the table, you have problems controlling the cue ball. Bill, I agree. Much, much better off at saving the two as a key ball. Bill, now, that's what see. separates a great eight ball player from eight. He will get out here. Most likely, high, he has a high percentage chance of getting out here. But the way that you said, he had a higher percentage chance. If you keep taking the highest percentage way of getting out, you'll get out more often and be that much more successful. And I'll put it to you in another way. It was much easier playing position from the two to the eight than it was playing from position from the two to the five to the eight. But nevertheless, he did a superb job. And he fed off of that missed, that, that, that unexpected opportunity that he was presented with. Six after six games, the and now, all of a sudden, Larry, this match is tied up at three games apiece. Each player has given Archer the other player a game. game so from seven. that standpoint, it's all even up, and the score is even up to three games apiece. Right. Okay, I was just informed that when Roger missed the 11 ball, there was a possibility that the ball skidded on him. Now, that could have been uh, uh, exactly what had happened because he lost the cue ball, too. He really didn't get the speed on the cue ball that I anticipated that he was going to get from the cue ball, falling short of the mark. Let's take a look at the shot. Let's take a look at the shot and see if, in fact, the 11 ball skids. I don't know. I don't know no. if it did or not. I don't believe it did, Bill. He he missed the ball. He he hit the ball fat and he missed it. Uh, like you said, I, I believe he was in between thoughts. Uh, I, I think you hit the nail right on the head. He was in between thoughts and uh, should have done that before he got down on the shot and decided exactly what he wanted to do Absolutely. before he got down. Absolutely. Now, now, when he was down on the table, he should have known what he needed to do and concentrated on the execution of the shot opposed to deciding what he needed to do while he was stroking the ball. Because the shot that he missed, I would bet I could make 100 out of 100 exactly. times. And I'm sure he would, too. But let's see if Archer really jumps on here that's this mistake because this could be two games great break great great break, break. Eight, go, eight ball going towards the side made the 14 ball. great break you know that corner ball has gone around the table several times now and made it gone right pocket, in that corner. You know? and that was the last ball rolling as well so therefore that particular corner ball from the area of the table that archer's breaking from is obviously somewhat on. And that has something to say for uh, how consistent the balls are being racked, too. They're being racked almost the exact same way every time. Okay, now high balls are, are, are without a doubt, the best choice here. If he, can, if he can shoot the high balls there and reposition that 10 ball or play, maybe even play the 11 off the 7, for instance, the only problem on the table for the high balls is the 10 ball here because of the position of the 7. If he can, if he can pocket the 11 into the seven and eliminate the seven from that position on the table, I think that the high balls is a much better choice. But he has to be careful not to move the eight or the ten in doing that. He doesn't want to put the eight in a bad position. Now low balls, it's not a bad choice, but you're going to have to deal with a one-four combination and still control the head ball, the one ball, uh, later on in the rack. Bill, right now, he can shoot the eleven and move the seven out of the pocket, which he's going to do. He's shooting the combination also to come off the seven into the rail off the seven the seven will move i know it's a this is dangerous that the seven doesn't get in the way 
of the uh, 10 ball. Yeah, well, that's really what he would really love to do. He would like to shoot the 11 into the 7. He would like to shoot the 11 into the 7 and try to move that 7 from that position. Which he did. Yeah, and he didn't disturb the 8, which was really something that he couldn't afford to have happen. He executed the shot perfectly, and it looks like he's gotten a great reward for his effort. And it looks like, to me, Larry, it looks like he has an excellent opportunity to take the lead in this match, something that Griffiths hasn't really been confronted with yet in this tournament. That's right. Playing from behind. He's going to be. Yeah, I believe he will be behind here. I like shooting these, the three stripes down at this end of the table now. Shooting the 15, coming over for the 9, and then the 13, coming up for the 10, 12 in the side, then the 8 ball. Got right on the 9 ball, perfectly. You know, the, the, the pattern you describe is a, is, is a very good pattern. If he can attain a straight-in shot on the 10 off the 13, when he shoots the 9 and he comes off the 13, if he can end straight in on the 10, he, he, all he needs to do then is stop the ball for the 12 on the side. Right, it's very simple. You play the balls the right way, it's always easy. And if you people at home can't see that pattern, here's the pattern. He shoots the 9. Maybe he comes over here for the, for the 13. He shoots the 13, coming up here, ending here, straight in for the 10. Shoots the 10, stops right here with the cue ball, shoots the 12 on the side, and he's got the 8 ball right there. Right. Right there. Very little movement on the cue ball, very little, very little chance. Okay, this is trouble. the crucial shot. Now, when you get down to the last two or three balls in your color group, cue ball control becomes very, very crucial. Speed of the cue ball is absolutely crucial right here. He'll try to get it right back to the middle of the table, a little bit of, I believe he got perfect, Bill. I okay, now what, what option he does have, Larry, he has the option of, 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 of shooting the 12, providing that he has a pocket, the 12, and then shooting the, shooting the 10 and going around the 8 like this. But I still like shooting the 10 and then 12 on the side, and it doesn't look like he likes that. So he must feel comfortable that he can shoot the 12 and then pocket the 10 playing position around the 8. Well, he's looking now for more the shot, the type of shot he's going to have on the 12 in the side, which is the best thing you can look at because as soon as you try to go around in between balls, you know, you're flirting with those balls and you're asking for trouble. Right, and I totally agree with that assessment, Larry. I do believe if given a choice, I would rather stay away from contact with other balls. Now, he's repositioned the cue ball in the optimum position to go around the 8. He's comfortable. He can reach it. He can hit a full ball. He can hit the fullness of the ball, which will enable him to control the cue ball. So he's positioning the cue ball ideally for what he had in mind. Very nicely executed. Yeah, perfect. And it looks like this is game number seven. It looks like that for the first time since Griffiths has been playing in this tournament, he's going to be confronted with a small deficit. And Archer hasn't saw the lead since he's been in the tournament. That's right. <laughs> well, and he's a dangerous person to give the lead to. Archer wins game number seven. After seven games, the score is Mr. Archer four, Mr. Griffiths three. Mr. Griffiths will be breaking in game eight. So Griffiths may be guilty of never wake a sleeping giant. So far in this tournament, Archer has been sleeping. If that miss on the 11 ball has awoken him, then Griffiths will be responsible for awakening, uh, awakening the sleeping giant. Well, the shot that he missed, the very simple shot, cost him two games. And a lot of times you'll notice uh, a lot of players will miss an easier shot than a tougher shot. They take it for granted. They think it's, you know, uh, there's no way they can miss it. And they let up on their concentration. You know, sports competition is so fickle. You know, sometimes you, you could be playing poorly and you don't know why. Maybe it's your mechanics, maybe it's your mindset. You don't really know why. But one time you win a match that you don't feel that you should have won and you start playing well during that match and it snowballs from there. And then the next match you play, you play better. The next match you play, you play better. You do well in the tournament. The next tournament you play in, you're back to your old form. I've seen it happen in the past many times. Quite possibly it could happen once again here with, with, with Archer. Take a time out. Let's go back while there's a I'm break in the action. Let's go minutes. back to the to the opening shot, or maybe not the opening shot, but that there shot on the combination that actually 
opened up the entire rack for Archer, playing the combination kiss off the seven, opening up the entire rack for Archer, you know, giving him an opportunity, you know, to showcase his skills and win this particular game. Boy, did he hit that great. That was the whole key to the rack, too. That opened up the rack for him and made it all very simple. Okay, since the players have opted to take a break, Larry, I think it's a good time for you and I to do the same thing. We'll Sounds be back good. in a minute. Okay, now this is a different type of a situation for both of these players, Larry. If you remember, Griffiths has never been behind, and Archer has never been in the lead. This is a, this is a reversal of roles, if you will. Look at this break. And all of a sudden, even he though he broke the ball, yeah, even though he broke the balls well, he didn't get rewarded with a ball. And now, funny things may be starting to happen against Griffiths. It's the first time he's been in the in the in, in playing from behind, so he may just start saying to himself, "Hey, what's happening? I don't have that good feeling anymore." It's up to him to get it back together if given the opportunity. Okay, and create positive things. That's uh, exactly right, Bill. He's going to have to not let this get him uh, get him in a bad frame of mind. He's been playing so well. Let's take a look at Griffiths on the monitor now, okay? And that now, you know, he looks a little disgusted, aggravated. Well, he just didn't seem like he was real happy with the results. Once again, he shook his head. You know, he was disgusted. You know, but he cannot afford. And I really mean this sincerely. He cannot afford to dwell over what had just happened. The missing the 11 ball and coming up dry on a big break. Because if he allows that to break his concentration, something that he really needs to have to defeat Johnny Archer, well, you know, he's going to be making a big mistake. On the other hand, Archer, as I mentioned to you before, he's been playing really subpar in this tournament. And for that matter, the last several tournaments he's entered. Could he possibly have been awoken in this in this particular turn by that miss of the 11 ball? You know he's been playing quite well in this match, Bill, and his speed his speed still has has a chance to elevate from this position. Look at how he studies this uh, table. He does such a good job of that that is exactly what you must do to play good eight ball. Exactly what you're seeing, Johnny, do right here. Study the whole layout from the first shot all the way to the eight. He's a, he's Deciding which balls he's going to take, which uh, I believe he's going to take. He's going to take strike. the low balls. He is going to take the low balls. He wants to shoot the 12 into the 7 and maybe try to reposition the 12 and tie up the 13. It's so the that's what he would like to 15, do. 15, 15 into the Or the 15 uh, yeah. into the 7. You know? Well, I kind of like the low balls here. He's saying something to Roger, or I would have to believe Roger's saying something to him. See, if he shoots the 15 into the 7, which, which I don't know if he has the, has the ability to do that and tie up at 13 and 15. That would be really good. Uh, that's what he okay, did. That's what he did. You and see what he, he did? And he he has created a problem for Griffiths later in the rack, providing that Griffiths has an opportunity at the table. Uh, of course, Archer doesn't want him to have an opportunity, but there's no guarantee he won't. But what he did is he complicated the layout even more for Griffiths if he does have that unexpected opportunity. But Archer's playing really well, and there's an that's, that shot is an indication to me that he's thinking very clearly as well. Well, he did exactly what you said. Now he's looking. He has an option here to shoot the four ball. I, I would try to. I don't know. That four ball is a pretty good key ball. But the problem with the four ball being the key ball, he doesn't have a good lead ball to the four ball. You know, now the six ball on the other side of the table, he should shoot the four now. The six ball on the other side of the table is a pretty good key ball to the eight in the side. I like for him shooting the four now. He has to be careful if he plays position for the, for the three ball. Playing position for the 5-3 combination may even be a better choice. See, now he's got an angle where he may have to go into the 10 here. You know? Well, if he goes into the 10, he should shoot it softly, setting the 10 toward the position of the 13. And if he can do that, possibly he can stop for the position for the 5 in the opposite corner pocket. That looks like your best choice right now because you must... You know, but from my vantage point, and our vantage point, I should say, sometimes it's difficult to see the, really the exact angle that he has offered to him. But, oh, but uh, however, he still, in my opinion, may have been better off playing position for the 5-3 combination because the, considering where the 3 is positioned, he may end up with an angle that's going to 
create a problem for himself. He's going to try to, well, he did a good job. As long as that 10 doesn't give him a problem. Now, I believe he was thinking the two in the side, which that's, I believe that could be blocked right now. I don't really see a clear pattern from the position he's ended up in, you know, because I don't understand why he left the Ford there. You know, uh, it's a little bit of a problem ball. There's nothing of his color around that ball other than the two. Uh, I like the six as the key ball, but he has to eliminate both the four and the two. I like playing, if he can, playing, well, I don't think he can cut the four into the side. Uh, he's got a little bit of a problem here. See, he's ended up in a position now where there's nothing really that clear out there or nothing that natural for him to do. So he's going to have to still create something that he really shouldn't have done or had to do in this rack. It looks like he had more options available. He's going to end up using the, uh, the four ball as the key ball, and frankly, it's going to maybe be a difficult ball to get to. Well, I believe the two ball goes past the 14 into the corner, so he's going to go from the five. Well, he might have overshot this, which I think he, I, I know he went a little further than he wanted to. He wanted to go from the five and come back down for the two or come back down for the four in okay, the side. Here, here's, what he, here's what he could do here, okay? He can cut the five, sending the two ball one cushion, two cushions. Around here, opes to land straight in on the four, shoot, shoot the two, and then uh, he's coming right on your line here, yeah. Bill, which he came a little short, but he has the two now. See, he wanted to come down here and stop there. He's following a good foot short of the mark there. Right. Now, he has the two in the corner, and he's, he's created a little bit more of a problem than he wanted here. He wanted to end up shoot on straight in on the four. He wanted to end up straight in on the four. Then he would have shot the two. Bump the 14, play the, the eight, eight aside. aside. Well, I don't think he's going to have a problem here. I believe he'll pocket his ex his ability to execute is so great that I believe he's going to have no problem pocketing this ball. Now, I don't know about that. This is not that easy of a shot. He has to apply inside English. He hit it perfect, and he bumped the eight. And he may have opened up the uh, lower right hand corner pocket for the eight. He hasn't even looked at that. No, I don't think he did. If he didn't, he, then he has to, if he, if he, if this pocket right here, this is the eight right here. If this pocket is not available, okay, then he has to drag the cue ball down here. Somewhere like this line here. And play the eight ball in the side. Right. Which, let's see, we'll know real good. Well, he's hitting the. Oh. Boy, that's see, careless. That's yeah, well, you know, he labored uh, uh, in this particular run out, you know, and he, and he put a lot more pressure on him than I thought that he needed to because of his ball selecting, you know, the pattern that he chose. And what he really didn't want to do was give that gift back to Griffiths, the one that Griffiths gave him, you know, a couple racks ago. And I'm, I'm, I'm afraid for Archer, that is, that he did exactly what he didn't want to do. And Griffiths wasn't really feeling really good about his position, considering, you know, he had an excellent opportunity to lengthen his lead, and he, and he really failed on it. Well, I've noticed throughout this tournament, Bill, these side pockets, they don't have that much forgiveness. You have to be very accurate on these side pockets. The corners also, but the side pocket, I've watched more balls missed with that angle into the side in this tournament than about any other shot. Well, Rogers <laughs> has an opportunity here to tie up the match if he can run out here. He has uh, the 14 ball to get open the two problem balls on the table, which are the uh, 13 and the 15. Excellent shot. Very good shot. For a person in the chair that hasn't shot in three racks to make that shot, that's very nice. That was perfect also. That really opened up the rack, that particular shot. He would like to shoot the 13 now. Maybe a little bit too much of a difficult shot for him to shoot at this time. But, you know, frankly, it's really not that difficult. He just has to have the confidence to shoot it. He'll shoot the 13, stay for the 15, the 11, and then the 12. The 
the 11, the 9, the 12, and then the 9. Let's see. Yeah, that, that's a pretty clear pattern. Both the 11 and the 12 lay on top of the 9, making it easier for him to play position for the 9. 11, 12, 9. But he, he's trying to shoot the 12, 9, 11. I don't like that. I don't like that, that option there. I like shooting the 11, 11, 12, 9, or even 11, 9, 12, either one. <clears throat> but the 11, 12, 9, by providing that he can get the cue ball back about three or four inches. He's, he's looking better. at the 11, 9, 12. It looks like that's what he's going to do. I like the way he thought this out, too. The way he looks things over. He came down, looked at the angle he wants on the 9. That is so important. And, and he reason, came down too far. Yeah, well, he came far. down too far. That's the problem with that shot, you know. Even, even though you make the 11 ball a much more pocketable ball because of the speed that you hit it with, you sometimes sacrifice control of the cue ball. And I don't think at that, at, particularly at that particular time, it was a good trade-off. Obviously, it wasn't because he's... He's uh, over over followed or by bypassed his mark considerably. Yeah. So it looks like he's having some mental lapses. A last good, yeah, without times. a doubt, without a doubt, uh, since he's made that uh, that one error on that it's very simple shot. There's a good rule of thumb too, Bill. It's no good. You don't want to go really below balls like this. You don't want to. But he really doesn't have a problem there. I notice the position of the. Uh, of the nine ball right here, okay? That's the eight. Uh, excuse yeah. me, uh, the eight ball. This is the eight ball right here. Okay, if he, if he comes off the nine ball, repositions the cue ball here, the eight ball blocks the four ball, then he'll have to kick, okay? He, and I think that that's a pretty good selection that's because what he has is not easy. He may, I wouldn't play the pocket this ball. I would play to hook him behind the eight. I agree with you 100%. This is where exper real experience comes in, in eight ball, of seeing this. Well, now he's gonna, he still has that option. <laughs> because I don't know if this 12, if this, I don't believe this 12 goes into the side. So your shot, uh, putting him down there on, you know, on the last shot, if he shot your shot, Johnny would have been in a lot of trouble. Okay, if he walks down this end of the table, if he walks down to the foot end of the table, which is this end right here, okay, and he takes a look from this position right here, anywhere from this position right here, if he can leave the cue ball in this position right here, allowing him, if anything, to just see a sliver of the four, he cannot pocket the four from this position, and he cannot control the cue ball. So if he can slide off the edge of the 12, sending him over here, I think that he can win the game using that particular shot. That's without a doubt the best move he has right here. You don't want to be a hero, try to be a hero here and pocket this, uh, the 12 ball. So he should be thinking, obviously, not offensively, because he doesn't have an offensive shot. He should be thinking, where can I leave the cue ball? And but. It's quite obvious that you would like to leave the cue ball behind the eight. So go back down this end of the table and take a look at where you would like to leave the cue ball. And quite possibly, you may find a good spot. Well, he was lining like he was lining the 12 up to the corner pocket. Still uncertain what he wants to do. Well, you know what? He may, he may not have the angle. He may not have the angle to do this because it may be too thick. He may not be able to reach the side cushion because of, because of the thickness that he has to hit the 12. I don't know if he does or not. Let's take, we'll find out in, in, in a moment. He's drawing straight to the cushion. He's playing safe, but he's drawing straight to the cushion. He's playing at this. No, well, he let Johnny see this. He tried oh. to make the ball, which mistake. was the mistake. The big mistake. 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 I believe he did have the angle. He tried to make, look at the shot he left himself with. He tried to make a shot. He may have been a six to five favorite to make. Maybe, maybe a seven to five favorite to make, okay? And he's left himself a shot. Then another shot that he's another seven to five favorite to make. But two seven to five favorites makes him an underdog, doesn't it? Yes, it's a parlay. Seven to five, seven to five. five. The math tells you he's an underdog he's an to underdog. complete the mission. And he was a and he was a twenty to one favorite to hide him behind the eight ball and just put the cue ball on the rail. So that's, that's the percentages. 
you know, if you play the percentages, you end up with the dough. Right. And also knowing that, knowing the game of eight ball, if you're not sure you can run out, the best thing you could do is look for your best safety. And hooking your opponent is a always a great safety. See, now Ar Archer really has a decision right here, okay? I mean, he would love to shoot the four in the heart of the pocket, elevating and win the game in that fashion, okay? Now, the other option he has is to follow it in the event that he misses it, leaving Griffiths nothing at all, but that's a poor selection. Well, he's going to... He's got he, to elevate here. That's his best shot. Following it is not his best shot. I think he diminishes the accuracy of the shot equally as much following it as he does elevating because of the speed that he has to hit it with. And he's guaranteed... See what he did there? Look at here. Look at this. Oh, uh, my. I, well, you know something? <laughs> Hey, he Griff has a Griffiths has a great safe. He certainly does, and, I'm, and I'll let you point it out then. What, what would you do? Well, I would just I would come right off this side of the, uh, I would come right off this side of your ball off his uh, 12 ball, leaving the no, cue ball. That's not bouncing, the shot. putting the 12 in front of so he can't kick it cross corner. What's wrong with this shot? What's wrong with playing the billiard, hitting the 12, pocketing Archer's ball, utilizing the 12 as a hook to the eight? Now, Ar now Griff Ar Archer steps back to the table, hooked behind the 12. Look, like this. He's hooked now behind the 12. Great shot. You see? That was right. Now, that was the shot. <laughs> there's, there's no more, you know, ticky-tacking, tic-tac-toeing here. It's kick it in or you lose. Well, he's, I believe he's going to try to curve it, curve it around and... Uh He's become a huge underdog in this game, Archer. So I like uh, kicking two rails. I like kicking two rails and trying to make it in the side pocket. Uh, I don't know. Because the cue balls can come off the eight and come back up here and leave Roger. The way he's shooting it now, there's a good chance of a scratch. And uh, he's, you know, I mean, he's in a very bad spot to begin with, but the way he is shooting it, if he makes it, it looks like he's a he's a big favorite to scratch over in the corner. Okay. What you really have to weigh up is what's his chances of pocketing the two cushions? Okay. What's his chance of going two cushions and pocketing it opposed to going one cushion and pocketing it? Because if he doesn't pocket the eight, he's going to lose. What shot would you rather shoot 20 times and bet you make? Awesome game, scratching the eight ball. Mr. Griffiths wins game number eight. <laughs> eight games, the score is tied. Four games. And Mr. Archer will be breaking in game number nine. I'll tell you, this is a pretty, pretty interesting match, and I kind of like the way both players have been playing in this match. Obviously, they've made a few errors, but uh, in spite of that, you know, I think both players have played fairly well in this match. And it's 4-4, and so it's an interesting match. It's a very close, interesting, really tough-played match by both players. Yeah, and uh, Roger, I believe, was very, very fortunate to win that game after missing that shot. Uh, well, let's see if Johnny can uh, continue to break well. He has been breaking well this match. Controlled the cue ball, fought, no, and didn't get rewarded. Well, he's left an open table. Aside from a few balls that are tied up, it looks like the six and nine are tied up and the one and the 11 are tied up. So he's going to have to think if he can deal with those problems right away. Well, both players on their last breaks have failed to come up. They've come up. Both of them have come up empty, breaking. I 
I like doing something, Bill, in this spot, very, very aggressive to try to break open the uh, break open everything. If it looks like if he could come into the 11 ball from the ball hanging in the corner, the 11 one will break out, break out the nine also. Yeah, but the nine. Well, I don't know. That's that's still too uh, too much to ask. <clears throat> you know, because you have to hit that shot absolutely perfectly, and it's it's, it's very difficult to ask to do everything. Uh, low ball is the only problem. Ball he has is the one. High balls, he has the 11 as a problem, and then the 9 as a problem. This is the most important. This first shot in 8 ball will be the most important shot of this rack. You know, what he decides to do right here. You know, it's difficult to, to try to run out from this position. I tell you what I would do from this position. Here's what I would do. I would shoot the five, take the low balls, position the cue ball right here. Then I would slightly hit the two, sending the cue ball behind the two and freeze it to the two. And I would try to get ball in hand. That's what I would do. Because you don't want to try to run out. So you want to try to use some sort of strategy to get ball in hand. I shoot the five and try to reposition the cue ball behind the two. He tried to break out the one there, and now he has to think safe. Your shot gave him more options to hook him, possibly win the game on three fouls, which well, I don't. Well, think. I don't think I would win the game on three fouls. But if he wouldn't hit any of his color on the on on, on the subsequent shot, then I could place ball in hand and, and clear the one. Once the one and cleared the table, then it becomes open, and I'm going to win the game from that position. I believe the worst thing he can do in this spot is even think about pocketing at a, a ball. He will just be uh, digging himself in a deeper hole. All the balls he has now, all the solids on the table are going to help him win the game to leave him on the table. So if the, he doesn't have a clear plan on how he plans to win this game, then he would probably be doing himself an injustice if he tries to run out. Exactly. Right now your balls are like soldiers and uh, you don't want to kill any of your soldiers. <laughs> He's going to try to break loose the six here. That one ball is going to be a big, big ball for, for, uh, for, for, for Archer because it's very, very difficult for, for Roger to, uh, to gain some sort of a path to pocket the one. I mean, I, he, he, he might run out here. I, I'm not sure if he can see the six ball to make it and stay there for the f seven in the side to break up the one off the seven in the side. But if he does, well, that's what he's going to try. To run out here, he'd have to be, I'd have to say he'd have to be fairly lucky to get out here. So the, just trying to run out here is such a it's, a, it's the wrong thing to do. Well, if he pockets another ball or two, then he's committing himself. Uh -oh. Okay, now he's got a good angle on the seven in the side to break loose to one. But it, once again, you know, there's no guarantee he's going to come up with a shot on the one or the five in front of the pocket. Well, he's got the... Five he's using as his insurance ball, but uh, the one ball looks like uh, for the one ball to get to an open pocket. He's going to have to hit the seven in the side with some speed, because in the event that he does pocket the seven in the side and goes into the one or the 11, he really needs to move the one f away from that area on the table, possibly across table, where there's much more room for him to pocket it. Here's, here's an interesting spot, Bill. Here's a spot where... Griffiths looks like he's leading this game and really in reality he's losing this game <laughs> he's uh, I make it Archer you know a big favorite to win this game well I wouldn't because he can win the game with Archer in the chair if he pockets the seven and get some action on the one 
gets a little bit lucky here. We get, let's see, he missed the one. Yeah. There's so with many speed. bad things that can happen. I mean, he <laughs> he does have a, no, he doesn't have a shot here. He doesn't have no. a shot, and that's why I say Archer Archer was a big favorite. Uh, with now now he, Archer's become a bigger favorite to win this game. If he elected to shoot your shot first and not try to pocket the ball or pocket the first ball of the rack to declare solids, then hook Archer, then he, you know, that would have been the correct yeah, way that, to go. Yeah, that, that type of strategy is really what you want to look for when the situation you're confronted with is very difficult. So therefore, you should switch your plan of attack mentally. And you should say, okay, let's take a look at a different type of strategy to win this game. And when you do that, you always want to look at where can I hook my opponent so I have the luxury of placing cue ball in hand anywhere on the table to alleviate the big problem that I'm confronted with. Exactly. And, and having all your balls to help you win the game, uh, you know, which is a key, too. Right. You don't want to eliminate your, your color from the table because, like Larry said, the more soldiers you take off the table, the less you have to fight your battle with. And there are a lot of cases playing eight, though, particularly when you're allowed to play safe break, that when you pocket your color, you're actually decreasing your chances of winning. It's like you have a little army, and every one of your little colors is a, a soldier in your army. And when you start putting them in the pocket, that means you're killing them off. Exactly. And that's not what you want to do. And in this instance, that's what Roger did that Larry said he shouldn't have done. And I have to agree with you there, Larry. Right, unless he, you know, knew that he was going to run out, then you sure don't want to pocket any balls. Well, he almost got lucky there. <laughs> well, that ball's not going to reach, but he's going to give it every, yeah, he's going to try yeah, really to hope it in. He has some mental telepathy <laughs> to get that ball to reach the hole. If that reached the hole, I think there would have been an investigation. Yeah, there, there sure would have. Uh, the smart table would have been, been accused of, <laughs> hey, juice joint. hey, what's happening here? Well, now Johnny just has to take his time now, especially with his side pockets. He just missed his. He didn't get exactly where he wanted. By his reaction, he's gotten more of an angle than he wanted here. He can't shoot to 10 because that's the lead ball to the 13. He would like to end up on that side of the table with only the 10, 13, 8 left. But how does he get there where he is now or on that line on the 10 with just the 10, 13, and 8 left? The 12 is a very good ball to do that with. Okay, I would shoot the 9, 11, 15, 12, 10. Well, he's going to shoot the 12. I believe the 9 goes. Well, if the 9 doesn't our, go. Yeah, he's going to shoot yeah, the 12. He's going to use the 9 to get onto the 10 yeah, and 13. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the correct he's way of playing it. He's going to go from here to the... All right. Okay, he can shoot the 11, 15, 9, 10, 13. That looks beautiful. That looks like the proper... That looks like the best way to go. And then watch how, the, watch how everything connects here, okay? He can shoot the 11. Pocket the 11. Repositioning the cue ball here. He then can shoot to 15. Repositioning the cue ball here. Shoot to 9. Repositioning the cue ball here. Come out here. Shoot to 13 and win the game. 11, 15, 9, 10, 13. The key ball to the key ball is the 10 to the 13. Because the 13 is the ball that's, 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 that's least accessible. So the 10 is a good lead ball. Why is jacking ball. up? I don't know, Bill. He should shoot the 13, 9, 10. Or the 15, the 9, 10. The 15, 9, 10, 15, 13 9, 10. Is, looks like the, the best way he can possibly go. He, he elevated because he wanted to shoot the 13, 15, 9, 10, 8. Okay? He wanted to shoot the 13, 15, 9, 10, 8. He has to shoot a 15, 9, 10, 13. Yeah, right. The, the 10 is the best ball on the table to get on the 13. He's, he's forced to go the right way. <laughs> he wanted to go the wrong way, but he's going to be forced to go the right way. Griff is 
in the chair, actually defenseless in that position. Bud had an opportunity in game number nine. Landing straight in on this shot is not really where he wants to be. He wanted to have a slight angle. Now he has to hit it with some velocity and draw back, and he has to clear the one. So therefore, this shot isn't really automatic. His caliber, I don't think he'll have any problem with it. Playing the careful side of the 13, making sure that he got back away from the one, this time a little too much. He's done a good thing, though. He's, he's walked away from the table, and what he's doing now is he's preparing himself to shoot this 13 ball. Notice he has to elevate because he can't afford to touch the five with his cue stick. Hit it perfect. Executing that shot to perfection. Game number nine, number nine will go Archer's way. Once again, he will have the lead in the match five games to four. Archer wins game number nine. After nine games, the score is Mr. Archer five, Mr. Griffiths four. Mr. Griffiths will be breaking in game number 10. Okay, we're going to change the tape, and we'll be back in just a small, short moment. Okay, we're back, and I, and I told you it would only be a short moment. We are back. No problem. Archer and Griffiths are exchanging words with one another on the uh, jovial side, I might add. Breaking the balls not as well as he has been, hitting the side of the one ball, not pocketing a ball. He, pocketed, on he did pocket the 15 in the side. Oh, he did it just ball. snuck in there. But a lot of congestion out there, Larry. And let's take a look at what congestion is actually out there. Notice the, I believe it's the, uh, what, what ball is that, I'll the 12? The 12 of the nine right here, two balls that are problem balls. Mm -hmm. And on the foot spot, 10 and 14. Problem balls, okay. Solids are wide open though, Bill. Solids I don't think are wide open? Solids are wide open. I don't think he should have any trouble taking solids. He has the five and seven, which are open. And the three okay. ball connects to the two ball. The okay. six balls in front of the side for the eight ball. I no, don't I don't like that way. I don't like playing the, the six as a key ball to the eight because if he does that, he's going to have to go from the three to the six. And he may not be able to have the angle at that time in the rack to do it comfortably. I like going to the eight from the end of the table where there's no traffic. I like playing, playing position for the three, two, six, seven, five, eight, or five, nice. seven, eight. Well, that way there's no traffic. Now here's an interesting spot, Bill. He got in trouble on his first shot. I mean, he, he had, there's no excuse for not controlling the cue ball on the spot he was just in, and he brought the cue ball over way too far. No, he's not in any trouble here. Look, look at the pattern. The pattern's very clear. He's not where he wants to be. He Here's has to shoot the seven. Here's the pattern. If he can pocket the four ball, sending the cue ball, one cushion, over here for the three ball, then he can shoot the three ball, then he can shoot the two ball, okay, and come up, well, and come up over here anywhere for the six ball, then he can come down here and shoot the, these other two balls. Right. If he can play position, position for the three ball right now, or, but he has a look ball. at the angle. I mean, look at the shot he had to shoot. That was, you know, it wasn't called for from his first shot. Now he, now he has, he, I, I like shooting the three, two, six. I don't like, I don't like uh, saving the six as a key ball because he's got too much traffic down here at the end of the rack. He's going to have to play too precise. <laughs> had he not have had he not uh, been confronted with all this traffic down there, that would be obviously the best way to go. But now he's at the end of the rack, he's going to be dealing around all this traffic down here. And I don't think that would be a wise thing to do. Well, so it's going to be real important that he gets uh, from the seven straight in on the three now. Uh, yeah. So therefore, you know, there's no guarantee. That, well, that's not going to be too much of a problem. But there's, so there's no guarantee that this is going to work out because... He has to work around all this traffic at the at the at the end of this at the end of this of his color, and that may not be easy. See, he wants to end up on the right side of the table for position for the three. 
Well, he'll, she come out two rails right here. I don't think, I don't, like you say, I don't believe he'll have any trouble because he's coming right into the line of the three. He, well, he wound up, he wound up as good as, as expected. As good as, yes. Okay. So, therefore, he shouldn't have a problem because this is his plan. But going from the two to the six may be a problem for him. Now, this could be a problem. This could be a problem because now, look, he has a lot of traffic here. No guarantee he'll get where he wants to be. Had the 13 not been there, quite clearly this is the right choice. But that's not the case. The 13 is there. Look at all the indecision now. He did what he wanted to do, but yet all the indecision. Huh? Indication that, hey, hmm, oh, uh, maybe right. not. Uh, you know, <laughs> he's oh, going to have to. He's going to have to follow. He's, uh, I believe he could follow out two rails. He's going to wind up with an angle he's on still, the six. He's still he's thinking a, about yeah, it. He's still thinking. That tells you, that in itself tells you if he's, he may have gone the wrong way. Two rails. Now he has an angle on the six. He's going to be forced uh -huh. to He's go into the nine. Too much of an angle on the six. That's why it was difficult to choose that particular route because of all the traffic. Yeah, he's he's left with a. Uh, he might be better off just banking across side. Or if he cuts it in, he's going to have to go into the nine. He comes into the nine and See, he could stay on if top. He, He'll if he cuts it in, he should go into the nine, end up right here. I believe that's exactly what he's thinking. No, he, he missed, missed the nine, nine but he's going to wind up with uh, an easier shot. He got perfect straight in on this, the eight in the side, and I don't think he's going to have any problem. He's going to tie up this match. Okay, he, he got out because he's a strong, strong player. He didn't get out because he had a nice trip. No? I'd rather get out because I have a nice trip. You know, yeah. feel comfortable about it, no stress, sit in my chair, feel good. He got out because he's a strong player. Right, he made that's it a lot how, tougher. That's not how you really want to get out. You want to get out comfortably because you save your energy for the next rack. You know, racks like that are taxing. At, at later on in the match, near the end of the match, all those taxing racks could take their toll on you. You may not have enough left at the end to win the match. Exactly. Match tied up, five games apiece. Great match. Just a... Just Now, both players have come up empty on their last breaks. Let's see. Well, no, Griffith said pocket on his last break. But, but very happened. good eight ball, by the way. This is a very interesting match. You know, a lot of great shots, a lot of good thinking, you know, and a lot of great execution when it needed to be, it right. needed to be uh, executed. And a lot to learn from their great shooting and a lot to learn from their mistakes also. That's why we're here, to give, to give the people options to think about, you know, what if they do this? Well, this is a possibility. Do you like this better? You know, maybe this is available. If this is available. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh, it is. Okay, I'll see you next time I go to the table. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's like going to the, uh, after a football game, going to the drawing board. You could see your mistakes. You could learn from mistakes. You could learn, you know, that's what's so great about AccuStats also is that the, you know, to have the, uh, well, to be able to get great tapes like this of these, you know, of great talent and learn. It's, it's such a, it's such a great way to learn how to play, improve your game. It's really an invaluable experience. It's like going to a football game and going to the sideline and watch the coach draw up the plan on how to attack the offensive plays, draw his X's all over the board and explain why they're there and what needs to be done. Same thing here, you know. We describe exactly what's, what options are available and how the player's attacking a certain situation. And it's a wealth of knowledge that we have that we're sharing with the people out there. And I'm, you know, I don't begrudge any of one from learning from these tapes. I enjoy it. That's why I'm here. I learn from them all the time, Bill. That's, uh, I wish I had this when I first started playing pool 31 years ago. I would have, uh, <laughs> I would have had every tape I can possibly get. Well, it looks like that neither the high or the low balls are that appealing. So when you take a look at the situation and you evaluate it after the balls are broken, then you have to make your decision. Am I better off playing a cat and mouse game, repositioning balls on the table to do better off later in the rack? Or should I commit myself and try to run out, putting all my eggs in a really weak basket, trying to accomplish it, you know, in that fashion? 
He's choosing high balls. The 11 ball is a very difficult ball, very difficult ball. And no other balls around the A to alleviate the problem with the 11. Well, taking, you know, committing right now to, to is okay, but if he cannot get out, he better stop right now and think of a way to play safe. Okay, but, but don't forget the, uh, the four ball is a ball positioned behind the 11 equally as difficult for the solids as the 11 is for the stripe. So therefore, he really hasn't committed himself to the point where he's going to lose and he's gone too far. He hasn't gone too far. What he needs to do, he needs to position a stripe ball near the 11 so he can alleviate the problem in the 11 later on in the rack. So his objective, in my opinion, should be to position a stripe ball in the vicinity of the 11. So therefore, giving him more, more options and opportunities to alleviate the problem in the 11. That, that is definitely the, uh, the best way to play this, uh, this rack, and I'm looking to see a, a way to get a ball up by the 11. It doesn't look like he has too many options there. Uh, well, he, doesn't I'm thinking, have, he doesn't need to, hit to shoot at one up there now. He can still pocket a stripe playing position to reposition a stripe ball around the 11. Okay, now I understand. Uh, now the nine ball, or I, what I'm seeing, Bill, is why not just shoot you want to leave the cue ball behind the eight down here on the bottom rail not pocketing this ball putting it over here I know it's not putting it by the 11 but just getting the cue ball down here which leaves Roger with no shot you know no very offensive shot and if he does have an offensive shot I still don't see him but he's not going to have a shot if he could position the cue ball behind the eight ball so but I believe he's going to try to make this ball, and I, and I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Well, keep in mind, see, Roger has a more superior position simply because he has balls positioned to alleviate the problem with the four. He has the one and the six. Those two balls are, are really, really good balls for Roger because with either one of those two balls, he can move the four with either one of those two balls. Archer doesn't have that option. See, he could have missed that ball on purpose, but leaving it in front of the hole, putting him behind the eight, and, our, and Roger okay. wouldn't have had any, any now, shot. Now, here's what Archer, here's, excuse me, Griffiths. Here's what Griffiths may have in mind. See the six ball right here. This is his problem ball right here. If he can attain an angle with the cue ball on this line right here, the cue ball, he can pocket the six going into either the 11 or the four ball with the cue ball. And the five ball is here for an insurance ball. So that's what he should be thinking. He should be thinking gaining an angle on the six to move either the 11 or the four. If he can do that, he'll open up the table for himself and he can run out from this position. He should have never uh, had this opportunity. Uh, is, you know, Archer should have never allowed Griffith Stephen have an opportunity like this. See, I think what he has here, Larry, I think that he has a shot, cue ball, seven ball. I think he has a shot to draw down here and back up with the, with the cue ball, leaving him this angle, sending him in this direction. I think he has that. And by doing that too, coming into the 11 on that angle, it takes out any scratch because right. he might be thinking about using the angle on the one to go into the 11. Okay, now you I, people at home see the diagram. You know, I mean, it's very viable. It's very, very workable. And if he's able to succeed and accomplish his mission here, He'll win this particular game. You know, now see, he's on that line. He sees what I was drawing. He saw it. That's the angle that he needs to be on to win this game. Also on that shot, Bill, it's really, it's going to be important when he gets on that line not to hit it too hard because if he, he's going to want to tie one. it. Tie he's going to use the one to get on that line, not the seven, which is just as good. And he wants to be off the rail. That's a perfect angle. He's given himself a nice natural angle to move both the 11 and the 4. He would like to move the 11 and the 4. How about move just go, He, I would think he'd want to go into the 11 just hard enough to dodge the 4 out in front of the side because the 4, you could make more trouble. Just this try to hit it just hard enough, just like no, that. No, you want to hit it harder than that. You want to well, move that ball. Unless the 4 goes in the side. Maybe uh, Dean can give us a shot on the 4 in relation to the side pocket. 
Does the four go into the side? Not much room there. It doesn't appear from this angle that the four goes in the side. It does go in the corner, but you know, very difficult to, uh, to access that particular shot from any part of the table. It, it, it's, uh, it's not accessible. He's gonna have a problem. That's why I like hitting it with some speed. You wanna move that four. Right, he should have taken a much more care in executing that shot. That was a, he's, no, he's trying, trying again and he might have hit this. Again. Well, he, that didn't hurt him. <laughs> he's got a lot of work cut out here because. Uh, see, now he's running out of soldiers, you see. <laughs> That's why I liked hitting the six ball with more speed because there's more chances of moving the four yeah. when you hit it with more speed. You can move it with the cue ball too after going through the 11 with the cue ball. You know, you have to move that four ball. When you had the five as an insurance ball, you, had, you know, you had a lot of things working for you. And that was a time to create some, some good things for yourself. He's running out of time because he's running out of soldiers. Well, as long as he, uh, he's gonna try, uh, what I see here is he's gonna have to shoot the five back for the two. He's, and then get on the four and want to be in the vicinity. Ah, very difficult to get on the four. Very difficult to get on the four. Very difficult. Almost impossible. You know what? He, th this is going to be far-fetched, but let me draw something here. How about pocketing the two? Go one cushion, two cushions over here, straight in on the five, pocket the five and draw into the four. One, this two cushions. He might be going in. Oh, what oh. a, I'm not talking about a great <laughs> shot. I'm talking about a great shot. I didn't what think he had the ability wow. to create the angle that he did on that particular shot. He did, and you're talking about a world-class shot. Well, you just saw one there. Without a doubt, what a, whoa. Now he's going to shoot the five and take an angle on the four ball in the side, which he's positioned perfect, and he's going to come out for the eight in the I, corner. I thought that there was a possibility that he could have done that, but it, I didn't think that it was available. I didn't think that he could, get, he could have gotten the cue ball short enough to do that because that's the same angle that I, that I had him playing position for the five on. You know, and I didn't think he could get it that short, but obviously I was wrong, and he was right. Not only was he right, his execution was right on the money. It was right. It sure was. Well. Oh, he's not going to roll over, Johnny. No, not Mr. Griffiths. You're going to have to win this. <laughs> this this uh -oh. is dangerous uh -oh. here. I mean, I, you uh -oh. know, he's gotten perfect, but I mean, that was a little more. He got Un down like it was. Unintentional. Unintentional. Keep in mind, uh -huh. that's not the professional side of the nine ball to be on. Unintentional, but nevertheless, he'll accept it. Lost a little dignity, but a fair trade-off. <laughs> He's taking the lead six to five also. I'll tell you, that was, a, that was really a Mr. spectacular out. Great out. Games, the score is Mr. Griffiths six, Mr. Archer five. Mr. Griffiths will be breaking in game number 12. Now let's go back, Pat, and just take one more look at that perfectly executed breakout on the four ball going two cushions now i like playing position for the fiver i didn't think he could get it short enough to do what he's done or what he just did one two i didn't think he could get it short enough would you look at to hit this the four. but he certainly did and i tell you what that effort right there was rewarded just you know Especially considering the new cloth, Just too, which would be, so. you'd think the ball would come longer, and he shortened it up like that. That's amazing. Right. Well, he made a let's great see shot. if he goes, uh, this is a, this is the most important break of the rack right here. And he will break them better, because he did make a great shot, and he hit the balls much more solidly. Isn't that something how one thing, one good thing lends yeah. to another good thing? It's when uh, you start doing good things, your body feels it, your mind knows it, and you start to do good things that follow good things. And when you start to do bad things, 
you follow a bad thing with another bad thing usually and that's that's what's called snowballing either on the positive end or the negative side right now Griffiths is liking it because he made a great out and he's feeling real good about his position and he's back you know and you know in that gear that mode that he wanted to be in right and Archer knows that too and Archer by looking at him he doesn't look like he's too but Archer's been in this position many times in his in his uh, career many times okay and he's uh, been able to be you know the player that we all know him as uh, the true champion as we all know him, we all know him as has been resilient in, in, in that regard and has been able to come back from the canvas and knock his opponent out because he certainly has the weapons to do that and he's it looked like he was falling into that demeanor that uh, he enjoys playing with right bill but in this spot the the ball is in griffith's court right now and uh he's he has the ball because he if he runs out here he goes to the hill he'll be on the hill leading seven to five if he runs out here archer gets his break even if archer is successful with his break and runs out griffith still gets his break to stop archer so Griffiths is, uh, you know, he's a favorite right now. Yeah, I kind of like Griffiths shooting the uh, the 11 now, bumping the 8. He may have too much of an angle. That's why he may not be uh, opting to do this. But if he opts to do this, okay, it looks like that it, with the cue ball being here, if he shoots the 11, bumps the 8 possibly down this end of the table, he has the 15 ball as an insurance ball. He has the 9 ball as an insurance ball, okay? And he also has the 10 ball as an insurance ball. So therefore, if you're going to fool with the 8, fool with it now, giving yourself options to recover, you know, from bumping the 8. Well, he's thinking it out very carefully. Let's see uh, what he elects to do. I like the way you've you just described that that would be this is the time to do it now see now he's looking to take the low balls let's take the low balls he's got the four balls a problem okay with very few low balls around the four ball other than the three so therefore he may be uh, you know maybe going into a place where he may not want to be you know you know when you go into a place where you don't want to be you start to feel uncomfortable if you're there too long <laughs> <laughs> That's a good. You know, I like high balls. I think the high balls lend to a much easier run out. But he has to shoot the 11 now if he wants the high balls while he has all the insurance balls to, uh, to get him out of a potential problem if he ends up with one. Well, I like the way he's being very uh, careful. He knows how important it is right now. So I, I really believe he'll come up with the right shot here and shoot the 11. He's looking at the five. He's well, looking at the five and trying to come back for the four. You know what I think? I think that the reason he's deciding to take the low balls is because of this ball right here, the 13 ball. The seven ball blocks the pocket for the 13. And that's one extra obstacle that he needs to overcome that perhaps he won't be able to do, perhaps, you know? And that's maybe the reason why he's choosing the low balls. He's going to shoot the five. He's going to go two cushions, maybe toward the four. Maybe he's going he's to try gonna, to bump the four here. He's going to try to get on the four right in the corner. He's going to try to play for the four in the corner. He's no, trying to he's bump the bump four. The four. Right. He was trying to bump the four. So had he bumped the four off the second cushion, the rack would have then played much more routine. But he wasn't able to do that. And since he didn't do that, that decreases his chances considerably of winning this particular game on this particular inning. Well, he's looking at the six because he knows he has to leave the three in that position to get on to the four ball. That's going to be the whole key to the rack getting on the four ball. That's his only problem problem ball. So he's thinking about hitting the six coming back up for the three with the angle to just get on the four ball in the uh, in the corner. He's lying rather thin on the uh, on the six ball to do that. He's a distance from the six and on his line to the six is pretty thin to control the cue ball in terms of speed so therefore but you know but you have to take what the table offers you you really can't try to 
you know, create Bill, when you have problems out there. Bill, how does it look to just roll into the six ball, not try to make it, and just leave the cue ball there? <laughs> I believe Johnny uh, would I don't be think in a he's, problem. I don't think he's going to do that because he really can't afford Archer to, to, to allow Archer at the table here because, it's, you know, the, the out's not that difficult for the, for the high balls, you know? The out's really not that difficult for the low balls either. But the out without a first shot would be difficult for the high balls. If he could position the cue ball right where the six is, what shot would Archer have? Oh, well, I don't know. He could roll up on the 12. <laughs> Turn around, you know. I mean, what, what does he have then? You know, if he shoots the three, he's, you know, he, he's eliminating a ball on the table. If he, even if he can see it, that, uh, that, that he needs to aid him in positioning for the four. You know, he's going to try to run out here. He's going to spin the ball T toward the eight. Like this, toward the eight. Now he's got the seven. He's got to try to run out. Now he's got the seven, and he's got to go play position for the three. So this is what he's got to do. He's got to shoot, he's got to shoot the seven, repositioning the cue ball in this area right here. So he can slide down here for the four. If he can do that, he has a chance of getting out. But, but he's created, but he's created another problem. For the eight ball. Right. He's created a problem. He repositioned the eight ball. Right here. No pocket here. No pocket here. No pocket here. So, got some work. Big time work. Now he's trying to reposition now he the eight. Did. And it worked for <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what. He might have a perfect angle. From the position a, that he was in, he couldn't have asked <laughs> for a better result than what he got. You know, he is I really, mean, it could have been better. He's really something else. He's, he's, he's making, he's like a magician today with this, uh, the way he's moving these balls around. And last game, he positioned the cue. He came up perfect to. Uh, this is the line he wants to be on to shoot to three. Okay? That's the line he wants to be on. This is the cue ball here. Huh? Now, maybe he can shoot the one. Come back up here. If he, if he don't like it, if he gets too straight in, maybe he can bank the four. He's got the seven. Got the three there to win the game with. I don't know. Maybe that's an option. Maybe. Yeah, it looks like he has very thin cut on the three ball. If he eliminates the three, he may not even be able to come up with a shot on the one. So, therefore, why not shoot the one? Try to uh, try to to obtain the angle on the three to drop nicely for the four. With In the event that he falls short of the mark, bank the four and win it with a bank. Without a doubt, Bill, he has to shoot the one now. That's what he's looking at now. That's right. That's the side of the table we must go. Shoot the one. Try to try to get there off the one. If you fall short of the mark, go ahead and bank the four. Try to win it like that. Or play the three and and and, and play position on the back of the four. Got to shoot the one here. He can't afford to shoot the three. Something tells me he wants to shoot the three, but I but think there's he'll. No future in shooting the three. He sees the line he's on on the three sends him in between the four and the, th the nine, and he's going to go into put into the twelve. You know, and if he hits the twelve, where's he going? You know, and he's too thin on the three to control the cue ball. He has to shoot the one here. If it doesn't shoot the one, he's going to lose this game. And uh, that's that's my that's my statement there. If he doesn't shoot the one, he will lose this game. He can shoot the one and bank the four cross side if, 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 if what, you know if he wants to do that. What it looks like he's looking at Bill is shooting the three and stopping for the four all the way down in the corner by the thirteen and then shooting the one and that's what he's thinking about and I, I don't I disagree with that. I think he's uh, too thin to do that. Well, maybe not. That's I don't know. what he's looking at. Maybe that's not. what he's thinking. Hey, if he can do that, if he can shoot to three, setting the cue ball down here for position for the four up here if it goes maybe that's a good option if it goes i like him shooting the one he has to shoot the one he has to shoot the one well <laughs> there's a player 
One of the greatest players ever to come out of Chicago, Artie Bodendorf, wore more players out by taking his time. He didn't shoot the right, he never shot the wrong shot, but uh, he did make sure he took his time. <laughs> he was a great player, too. Okay, now he wants to reposition the cue ball on this line right here for the three. Anywhere on that line, okay? This is, this is, this is his area where he wants to be in after shooting the one. Right there. He knows this is a very crucial game. He wants to make sure he shoots the right shot. And uh, well, he's going to shoot the three. So let's take that off the screen. I think he's going to lose the game if he shoots the three. I agree with you, Bill. Well, he got away with it because he winds up with the four on the side. Hey, he's know, jacked up, but I didn't think he could go into the four by shooting the three. If he had an opportunity to go into the four shooting the three, well, that was obviously the right shot. I didn't think he could do that. I thought the angle he had sent him in between the uh, four and the nine. He's very close to the uh, nine ball, and the referee wants to make sure he's not going to... Uh, Scott Smith wants to make sure he doesn't uh, foul this... Let's take a look at the monitor. That's an excellent shot. Great shot right there. We'll be able to tell if he fouls it. Why I don't know he why it? he hit it so hard, Bill. I was very surprised to see that. I tell you, from the position that he was in prior to shooting the three, I didn't think he would get out because I didn't think he could hit the four. After shooting the three, contacting the four, I thought he was a bigger favorite from the position he left himself in, even though in spite of being behind, over top of the nine, I thought that position, he was a bigger favorite than he was before he shot the three. And then he just, you know, very, you know, very careless, haphazardly shot the three. I believe that shot is going to really come back to haunt him, missing the four on the side. Well, I kind of like really Archer shooting the 10, 13, 15, 14, 9, 12. The, uh, you mean uh, Johnny? I like, yeah, I Johnny. Take, take the balls behind the eight away, away yeah. off the table, the 10 and the 13. Mm -hmm. Take those balls off the table. And let's go 15, 14, 13, 10. There's nothing wrong with that either. Uh, but he has to take these balls at this side of the table. That's He'll clean up the area one neighborhood at a time. Okay? That's exactly what he's going to do. You know, don't go down to the nine and shoot. The, you, you don't want to, You want to save those as your two key balls. You know, and the nine is so deep at that end of the table. You would like to eliminate it. Maybe go 13, 12, 8, but shoot the 14, 13, 10, 9. Give yourself a nice angle on the nine and drop over from the 12. You shouldn't have any problem here. That's exactly what he is going to do too. Don't shoot the nine now, Johnny. You're, this is wrong here. This is definitely wrong. But, of course, he's such a great player, you know, he can overcome this. The layout plays much more simple, eliminating the 13-10 and then playing the 9-12. I agree with you 100%, Bill. And by playing the right way, the more often you play the right way, the higher percentage you're going to be at running out. Well, he is playing it right. It's fallen a little short of the mark here. He's on the non-professional side of the 10. Look at the other side of the 10, had he hit it harder. Much more ability to control the cue ball. Now he's forced to go in one direction with the cue ball. He doesn't like it because he didn't evaluate it prior to shooting the 13. Don't want to hit the eight. Okay. Now just pocket the nine and, and put all your concentration, every ounce of it into pocketing the nine with the stroke that you need to put on it. Understand what stroke is needed, and then put all your concentration into pocketing. Well, he doesn't want to get too straight here. Yeah, it's hard to get too straight because of the closeness to 12 is to the pocket. Much easier to run out in this fashion. See, you're, you're on top of the 8 coming down toward the 8 like this. The other way, you're underneath the 8, and you have to get on back on top of it. You may not have the angle to do that had he opted to go the other direction. Well, he's tied up the match, 6-6. Six, six. What a great match. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a 
Actually, it's a, it's a, a very well played match by Georgia both wins, players. 12, a lot of pressure out there on both six, players. Six, yeah, I think they responded Stars well to the pressure. Naturally, there were a couple of instances where they couldn't, you know, they, they didn't succeed with what they set out to accomplish and they couldn't accomplish it. But, you know, there was a lot of difficult situations they were confronted with. They didn't figure to accomplish all of them. They accomplished enough of them, you know, to solidify the credibility of how good both of these players actually are. They played really well. Yeah, it's kept both of these players in the match, executing in those key spots, too. It looks like Scott's explained to both Johnny and Roger that Pat's responsible for 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 making Roger Roger rush. <laughs> okay, Pat, you've been the villain once again. You're the villain. Okay, back to the match. Six apiece, and we have a match here. Definitely, definitely a match with a with a very live heartbeat. Excellent break. He Excellent. should get rewarded with a ball on that break. But it doesn't and look like he, he has. He didn't get rewarded. And if that, the combination looks like it's laying. But the, the interesting uh, the, situation down there on the table is the 11 and the 5. Someone that has a camera with the ability to give us a close-up on the 11 in relation to the 5. In relation to that side rail, I'd like to see it. Can, he park it the, can, can either player that chooses the high ball pocket the 11 off of the five into the side. I think that uh, Julian has a better angle on that. Julian, can you Rogers look at looking at that too. Can the 11 be pocketed in the side off the five? If it can, uh, then the high ball seem to be the better, the better choice. Taking the stripes. He's got to control the 13 here. He's trying to get on the 12. 12 will send him to the 11. The 11 does go in the side. You know, if he can play the 11 off of the 5, he could position, reposition the 8 ball in a better position, but not moving it much, you know, not much. If it doesn't happen, Bill, the eight does go down in the uh, Well, I understand where it goes, corner. but he could really increase his chances by moving, repositioning the eight just a little bit. Without running the risk of, you know, Hitting. creating creating some sort of congestion out there that he can't deal with later on. If, if, that's, if that's the case, then I don't advise him to do that. But if it's free... And you can reposition the eight a couple of inches from that five. I think he'd be better off. He's trying to play the. Uh, looks he like he's playing the nine in the side, and he might elect to use the eleven as a key ball. Yeah, I was thinking that, or I thought he. I was going to shoot the eleven here. It looks like he's not sure the way he's taking all this. Uh, Looking at the 11, if he's, is he sure that the 11 goes? He wants to make sure the 11, it looks like he is playing it off the uh, 5. Now, he, now, if he's not sure the 11 goes, he could shoot the 9, stop, and break it open with the 14, too. He can break the 11 out with the 14 <coughs> ball. <coughs> he's going to shoot the 11. It looks like he's playing position to shoot the 11 off of the 5 here. And he may be drawing the cue ball. So he's repositioning the eight. Now I don't I don't know. You see, I, I think he I, th I think he got kind of fortunate. He hit it a lot harder than he had oh, to. Oh sure, he sure did. <coughs> he ended up in pretty good pretty good shape considering where he repositioned the eight. The eight actually was in a better position where it was than where it ended up. Yes. Well, he's going to have to shoot the 13. I like shooting the 13, then the 14, and then the 15, and playing the 8 
in either corner. He made this run out a little more difficult. Well, it's such a key game, too. It's a key game. The player that wins this game is going to be on the hill. And uh, dangerous this is going to be interesting. I'm. This is very surprising. He's going to try to stop right where the two ball is. That's dangerous. He left himself a. He he shot. He elected to shoot the most difficult shot he had, and he's going to pay the price. That was dangerous, but he does block that pocket. He blocks that pocket with the eight, but is, you know, as good of a executor, you know, as good of a shooter as uh, Johnny is, I don't believe he's going to have any problem getting on the eight ball in the corner down by where the seven is and pocketing it. I don't see him having any problem with this. <clears throat> I like using the two ball to get on the eight, too. Seven, the six, the one in the side, four in the side. <clears throat> Two balls, very good shot to get onto the eight ball. Oh, Roger really left the door open for Archer. I mean, he's bad uh, angle here. Bad angle. He's left himself, but bad angle. A little carelessness at that at that point could cost him the match. See, it was quite easy for him to come up with a nice angle on the six. He got a little careless there, ended up on the wrong side of the six. He's pretty flat. I don't know if he's able to play position on, this, on the one four here. I believe he's going to draw back and try to play position on the one, which he has. He said it beautifully. Perfect. <clears throat> I like him shooting the one in the side, coming over here for the four in the side. For the five in this corner, and then shooting this ball coming over here for the eight down in here. That's workable. It's available. The f it's not something that plays natural, but he doesn't have anything out there that does. That's one of the better options, maybe the best at this time. He has to, what he really needs to do is he has to understand it. First, he has to understand that's available. He has to understand it, has to accept it, and then deal with it. Well, he's looking at the five right now. Nothing wrong with the five right now. <clears throat> the way he plays these the f these three balls, the one, the four, and then the five, or the five, the four, the one, whichever, the, leaving the two for the last ball is going to be very important. The last ball before the eight. <clears throat> now he's going to shoot the four and come up for the five in the corner. And then from the two to the eight. Uh -uh. He's he falling a little out of line this. You know, there. I believe these players are feeling the pressure, Bill, a little bit. Uh, well, I feel that they're they're getting careless at uh, at the wrong time. You know, he's lost his market now on controlling the cue ball, leaving himself a natural angle off the two, and then he's, he's decreasing the accuracy of the shot by shooting over the ball. Yeah. Now he's going to have to stretch. And force the cue ball over where if he was more towards the rail and had the angle, it would be totally natural. He would have been able to pocket the two. The cue ball would have naturally went over to get on the eight ball. Now he has to just pull it over a little but bit. But one thing he has in his favor, he stretches well. He's such a lean built man that he does this very well. Beautiful position. When you shoot this shot, you have to make sure you don't hit the point. You cut it away from the point. <clears throat> I 
I don't think Johnny will have any problem with this shot. He's taken plenty of uh, care and mm, hit it and pure. Hit it perfect. Hit it pure. Well, Johnny's on the hill. Johnny's taking a lead of seven to six. Archer wins game number 13. After 13 games, the score is Mr. Archer seven, Mr. Griffiths six. This is a race to eight. Mr. Griffiths will be breaking in game number 14. A very, very, very exciting match. Very exciting match. Really like this kind of action. I think both players are feeling it. Both players are responding well to the challenge. Archer obviously a favorite at this time, quite a big favorite. Matter of fact, being on the hill seven to six. Griffiths, Griffiths def desperately needs to respond to the challenge at hand. He has to hold service here just to get to the hill. <coughs> <laughs> and then Archer has to, uh, then Archer is guaranteed his break because he will break <laughs> next regardless. Oh, excellent break. Two Pocket ball. Two ball. Ball spread quite nicely. Uh, looks like he shouldn't have any problem here. He has a, it looks like, well, the eight ball is locked up. He does have a problem. The eight ball looks like it's tied up down here. He could here. choose the high balls. He could shoot the nine ball here. Could go, you know, play position. Well, to choose the high balls, he's going to have to get back down for the 11. The, the the solids, if the eight did go, the solids are laying perfect, but the eight. No, uh, right. The solids are a much better choice if the eight was in position where it is, but it's but it's, that's not the case, okay, which makes this particular decision an interesting one. If he chooses the solids, he has to still deal with the 11, 10, and 13. Now, the 10 and 13 aren't really easy balls to get to. You know, they are positioned near the center of the table, and they aren't frozen, which, which your first indication or feeling should be that, hey, they're not that difficult. But they are difficult balls to get to because the 8 ball blocks the pocket for them on this end of the table, and the 5 ball blocks the pocket for them on the other end of the table. You know, so, you know, you're going to have to do something. You're going to have to maybe draw the cue ball into those two balls right now. But I understand he would like to stay there for the 15 to open up the table nicely for himself. But, you know, the, the, the 13 and the 10 are very deceiving and they may fool you. They are not laying that good. If he could move the eight right now and, and open up the pocket for those two balls, maybe that's what he has. Best be that's what he has in mind. Oh, well, he wasn't able to do that. You know, not, uh, now he's, uh, he's straight into the 14. I don't think he has the angle to go down the table for the 11. Is the 13 and 10? It looks like it's lined up in the side. I, I think he does. Oh, he does not have any angle there. I believe he's going to have to come back for the combination. See, in a lot of cases, even though balls are positioned in the center of the table and they're not really frozen or, or closely that close together, they are deceiving. It gives you that false feeling of security. You know, I'm okay, but you're not okay. But they don't have but, a pocket. But you're not okay. <laughs> you know, you're really yeah. not. Yeah. So it looks like it, the way I see him, the, the, the best thing I see here, Bill, is that he's going to have to pocket the 14 in the side and come out here, play the combination into the side. This combination looks like it's yeah. It's that's that's a that's a good option. But how can you control the lead ball, the 13? Maybe you're better off going into the balls here. No, okay. He's, he's okay, taking now, the combination. okay. Now how's he going to control the 13 ball, the lead ball? What's well, he going to do with the cue ball? I believe he's going to leave the 13 right there. He can't leave it there. And just go up for the 11. He can't leave it there. He's got to travel with it. He left it there. And oh, he's going to oh, try to get an there. 11. He's going to get a nice angle on the 11. If he got down far enough, it looks like he has a lot of angle on the 11, but there's no <laughs> balls to obstruct coming back down table. He has a wide open table to come back up and down. Yeah. He's going to have to hit it hard enough to go all the way back down to the uh, bottom rail and come back up. Like so. And he's going to get up perfectly. Uh, yeah, I didn't like think he could, he could control the 13 with the combination. You saw it much better than I did. You know? And he executed it the way you saw it. It looks like that... Uh, you know, he's almost out of the woods here, but there's one slight problem. That's the, that's the four ball. Which he hit it uh, very nice. 
and we're going to get what we all wanted to get, a hill hill, hill match, <laughs> okay? And you rightfully so, because this particular match deserves to go hill hill, because it's been an exciting match. Both players have played well. <laughs> Both players are on the hill. It's, it's a great match. match. What a, what a match. Now, without a doubt, Archer breaking. We have is center court. The match is tied seven games apiece. It's a race to eight. Can we have a hand, please, for Johnny Archer, Roger Griffith. There's been a lot of pressure situations in this match, and it's fitting that it should Archer end this will way. Archer be breaking in game number 15. This is really a test of character, you know, when you really take a close look at it, because there's been a lot of situations where either one of these players could have folded up tent, you know, or folded up shot, a shop, I should say, and, you know, but neither one of them did. They showed a lot of resiliency, they showed a lot, a lot of courage, they responded well to the challenges they were offered, you know, and once again, this is the final challenge, game number 15, right. seven games apiece, and both players, I think, have, have grown somewhat by this match, you know. That's a good match. I agree with See, you, that, Roger. See, that's, that's a class. That's that's, a, uh, that they're, they're showing their respect for one another. It's, it's, it's a well-played match. They both have experienced a lot of pressure. They feel for one another. You know, <laughs> they, they, Neither one of these players deserve to lose this match, but one of them has to. And soon we'll, we'll see which one it will be. Well, I look for Archer to break and run out. I believe Archer's been breaking well, and I believe Archer has a... You know, with the with the having the break, it's so big. It's so big for either one of these players. If Roger was breaking, I would feel that he was going to break and run out. But uh, this is a must-perform break for Archer. He must notice, perform well on the break. Do you notice that he has moved? Uh, he, well, he's breaking. He's he's moved the cue ball around on the break too. He was breaking from the other side, uh, putting a lot of concentration into this break. A lot of it. He, he hasn't come up with a ball on the break. Look. He did not get rewarded. The one, and, the one and the eight are locked. On the, the, break. the one and the eight are locked up. High balls have a distinct advantage in this match. Because the 15 will open up the, uh, from the 15, he's going to be able to uh, open up the eight ball. Right now, from the 10, he can open it up. He can shoot the nine. Fall the nine the 10, and follow with the and 10. And go into the one eight, using the 15 as an insurance ball. See? He can shoot the 9 if he can roll it, then shoot the 10, go into the 1 8, using the 15 <laughs> as an insurance ball. That's funny. He was acting yeah, like he, he wanted to stab at it and shoot it one handed. He He's going to shoot the 9, end up here, shoot the 10, go into these two balls here, have the 15 as an insurance ball. Very good speller, Bill. <laughs> Well, the key here, Bill, is that he doesn't foul a ball, too. He's going to be over a lot of balls here, if anything, any part of his shirt or anything. Any this part could of very his body. well be match ball right here, because if he attains the angle that he wants to on the 10, he'll be able to go naturally into the 1-8, opening up the rack nicely for himself. Hit it good. He may have dropped too low on the 10. Notice. That's not the angle. This is the angle he wanted to be on. He ended up over here, which sends him maybe too high. So therefore, he may not have the angle that he needed to end up with. I don't know. Possibly he may not, but possibly he may. From my vantage point, it's hard for me to, decide, to, to, uh, to uh, distinguish whether he does or he doesn't. Well, without a doubt, this will be the uh, key shot in this rack. I think he's, from looking on the monitor, it looks like he is going to fall perfect right into the uh, rail right before the, right before the one and bounce the one out. Okay. There's his insurance ball right here. That's his now insurance it looks, ball. Now it looks pretty much uh, the eight ball, the eight ball, you know, is laying He's going to have to find a good key ball to get onto the eight ball. 
You know, he may want to save the 15 as a key ball, but of course, that's not really an ideal key ball either. You know, he repositioned the eight. I think he hit it a little too hard. He repositioned the eight behind the one. Naturally, it was uh, inadvertently, but nevertheless, it still ended up behind the one. And the one blocks a lot of the path where he wanted to be with the cue ball to pocket the eight. So therefore, it's an obstacle and surely one he must deal with. And that's what he's thinking about right now. The best way to deal with the eight. Everything else, you know, well, was laying in, 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 in a position on the table where he could be run off uh, several different ways. But, but the 12 ball also, except for the 12, too. The 12, he's going to have to think of a, uh, he's going to have to figure out how to get on the 12. Hey, there's nothing uh, easy, really, about well, this layout. The way I mean, it's it's very workable, but it's not easy by any means. I like shooting what he's shooting the ten, playing the thirteen in the side. I'm a, I would leave the. He's going to come for the thirteen in the side. I would leave the fourteen for my key ball, to get on the eight. I would play the four, the thirteen, the eleven, the twelve. Leaving the 14 for my key ball for the eight, shooting a, you know, a little more difficult shot on the eight, but knowing that I'm going to be shooting, you know, guaranteeing myself a shot on the eight. Hmm. 13 in the side. You know what he could Stop. do? Stop. Here's what he could do right here. He could shoot. He could shoot to 13. Okay. Uh, and then shoot the 12. Draw over here. Shoot the 14. Take this angle. Okay, take this angle and then go this way. Off the 14 with this angle. This way. That might be exactly what he's doing, too. Maybe he's too thin on the 12 to draw it to shoot the 14 next. See, if he can shoot the 12 and draw the cue ball here, and then shoot the 14, 11, 8. That's that's a possible. That's what uh, he's doing. That's exactly what he's doing. Okay, now he may have to shoot the he may have to shoot the 14 and bump the four to stay right here. Well, he wound up a little straighter than he probably wanted to, but I don't think he should have a problem here. He's going to wind up with a, you know, he, I would like the cue ball back almost where it is right now for the eight ball. Okay, this is the eight right here. This is the eight ball right here, okay? If he pockets the ball, 11, that is, and draws it back over to here. This is the shot that, he, that he's going to be looking, looking, looking at right here. Just to win the long. match with. Exactly. I know that's going to be, but he's going to, but he's going to be have be shooting at winning the match as good as you know he pockets balls. See, he doesn't want to come too far. He got perfect. He got his. Couldn't have got. Couldn't have got. Any better spot. I don't think he could have. Couldn't have got a better spot like, from where he started from. What a great match, bro. What a phenomenal match. Arthur has lost two matches in this tournament. Eight to seven. But that match, that match, he played well. He played well. He sure did. Okay. He sure did. And He'll walk away from this match not feeling poorly about what happened because he did play well. And play resumes at 8 o'clock. And that's Eminem what he needed. versus Troy Frank. 10 p.m. Efren Reyes and right, he's lost to, He's lost to Bustamante on the hill and he's lost to Griffiths on Are the hill. Are we going to do an interview? Hey. How you doing, Good. Good to see you. No interview. Right. No interview on this match. So we'll close it up, Larry. It's been a pleasure working with you this match. You know, you you really know how to play eight ball. There's no question about that. You know, I'm, I'm glad you uh, joined us up here and shared your thoughts with all our viewers. Thanks a lot, Bill. You too. It's a, it's a real pleasure working with you also.
Okay, so on behalf of Larry Schwartz, this is Bill and Cadona saying thanks a lot for everyone out there that supports AccuStats. Give Pat a call if you're near a phone. 1-800-828-0397.